catastrophe lies at the edge of the vast chasm for any circle daring enough to tempt fate. Though when stakes are high, great risk is a calculation worth taking. A long lost and dangerous relic has surfaced from the depths of time. The assignment we've handed to our investigators is simple. Parlay with the dealer, recover the artifact, and return to the Pharos. But a circle is at its most vulnerable when a threat is underestimated. And for those lucky enough to return home, serenity awaits. The Circle of the Crimson Mirror, assignment number 4149, Seeking Serenity. Candela Obscura Core Rulebook has arrived and is ready for you to dive into. Visit DarringtonPress.com slash Candela to learn more. To begin at the beginning. The sound of footfall on stone. Shoes stepping rhythmically ceaselessly in a wavering sea of vibrant throbbing color fuchsia pink and red underfoot ahead and above infinite and fluid. A sense of deceit and guilt. A quickened pace as the footsteps pick up speed and guilt commingles with fear. Surely they'll know Maybe it isn't too late. You've always been better than this. Abruptly, the sound of running comes to an end. Only breath now. Low. Ragged. Laboring in this blood, hued nowhere. And where but a moment ago there was nothing. A face. Large and imposing stares. In horror. Lips curled back in fear around a gaping. Disdainful mouth. Eyes bulging in disbelief. Their gaze cast downward to an undulating bloom of darkening blue and veins of deepest black. Its shape spreads and retracts slowly over and over like lungs 
expanding and retreating in rhythm with every breath. A growing nebula, azure tendrils spreading like veins, growing fainter the wider they expand, ever so slowly taking on new form, gossamer and thin, like an infinite network of veins, still shifting and pulsing with every breath. And what began as one small, concentrated bloom of void has grown larger than life, giving rise to the shifting outline of a towering angel set against an endless infinity of throbbing coral rows. Wings splay wide and undulate. A tangled network of starry darkness wafts from the figure's head as it nods slowly. The angel's wings flare wider still, thin and transparent, and the looming giant bends at the waist. Its body begins to lose its shape. The veins of darkness running suddenly apart like rivulets of water on glass, pouring down from above like deep, deep rain. The rain is falling in heavy sheets on the deck of the SS Dandridge, a small yet stolid tramp steamer that has been soldiering forward through a very trying night. The crew, exhausted from what has already been a rough few hours at sea, fights on in the middle of an absolute beast of a storm, not nearly far enough from the vast chasm as any on board would like. The vast chasm, as a reminder, is the many miles long wound in the glass sea created almost 2,000 years ago when unimaginable calamity sundered the ocean, swallowing up the once mighty city of Old Fair. Any ship that draws too close is chancing its own destruction, as even the hardiest of vessels have been known to meet an unknown demise in its depths. Your circle the circle of the Crimson Mirror, has brought your current assignment largely to a close. Three days ago, you set out by steamship to rendezvous with members of the Red Hand. The Red Hand are illegal traffickers in rare objects and artifacts, not always, but often, steeped in the flow of magic. You know this, because it is your business to know. You are members of Candela Obscura, a centuries-old clandestine network of paranormal investigators spread across the nation of Hale and beyond. After your quartet caught wind of this information, and after informing your handler, Lightkeeper Zora Manning, contact between the Red Hand and Candela Obscura was made. Candela decided the juice was worth the squeeze and the Red Hand's asking price was met. Your task was simple. Travel by ship to meet the Red Hand on their ship, deliver the payment, secure the remains of Atia Griffia, and return home. You see, several weeks ago, a man named Aroha Tamakai a longtime power player in the Red Hand was purported to have come in possession of the partial remains 
of Atia Griffia, an historical figure known to scholars of the shrouded history of ancient Old Fair. One of the most powerful alchemists of her era, serving for a time at the right hand of Emperor Callinus himself, the last great ruler of Old Hair Fair, before that once mighty empire was swallowed by the sea. These bones, Griffia's bones, you learned, radiate with an unprecedented level of bleed, the corruptive force of magic in this world. Far too dangerous a thing to leave in idle hands. Deep at sea, the exchange was made. The bones procured. All that was left was to return to New Fair. But the storm, this storm, darkened the skies between you and home. What started in the morning as a brooding cloud on the horizon has blossomed into a raging squall that has you with your backs to the vast chasm, white knuckling every passing minute. A crack of thunder rumbles down from above and subsequent flashes of lightning briefly illuminate the clouds as the skeleton crew of this tiny ship stressfully yell to one another over the roar of the waves. You are beginning to wonder if you will survive this night. Everyone take a mark in brain. That's right, none of you have said a word and I am coming for you. Malcolm, we'll begin with you. Only minutes before, a score of barrel drums secured near the bow burst from their binding and began to careen dangerously around the deck, slamming into the battened hatches, sealing off the cargo hold. Standing in the doorway of your cabin, which is open to the chaos of the deck, you watch as a man and woman on the crew try desperately to drive these barrels back into the corner where they belong and strap them in. A heavy torrent of water crashes up over the starboard side of the ship, and this man, who you know as Sonny, slides clear across the deck and is slammed into the opposing wall, crushed by this steel barrel. In this moment, you stand looking out on the chaos. Tell us who we see and what you are doing in this moment. I'm a, I'm a soldier that's used to land battle, not sea battle. So right now I'm steadying myself, getting acclimated. I see people scrambling around. I see Sonny pinned. The dismay of everyone else on the, on the starboard bow rushing to his aid. Um, Sonny's screaming in pain, agony. And, uh, and I think I ought to assist him. The woman, her name woman. is Gabby, is, is crossing across to him, trying to get through the slosh of water that is on the deck, screaming for help, anything. Do you run out and? I run out and I run out to, to assist Gabby. Okay. Immediately. There are seven or eight of these steel barrels and his leg looks like it has been crushed against the wall of the ship. They were strapped against the far end of it. Are we going to try to pull him out, drag these barrels across the way? What's your action here? To drag the barrels would be, would be pointless. We're, we're, it's too much, it's too much ruckus in the ocean. We're unsteady. My main objective now is to make sure Sonny's free, make sure we get aid to his, uh, his leg and to help Gabby uh, uh, resolve okay. this mission. Do me a favor and give us, me our first roll of the night. Give me a uh, take the move action to get through the mess of water on the deck of the ship and reach this man in dire need of your assistance. Got a candela. You got a candela? Yeah. You grip the side wall and pull yourself all the way up using uh, a body toned from years of training and battle and make your way 20 feet forward to this guy and grab your hand onto the barrel and drag it out of the way. You can see that somehow a sliver of wood has lodged itself deep into this man's leg and his left arm looks badly crushed. Someone, get me. Oh, I have to get off the deck. Sonny, I want you to listen to me. Listen, you're in shock right now. What I'm about to do is going to hurt you immensely. 
but we have to move you in. We have no, to no, get no. you cover. No. We have to do it, Sonny. Gabby, I need you to hold. I need you. Is there anything you can put in in, in, his, in Sonny's mouth right now? Is there anything you can find? There are slivers and chunks of wood from the actual wall of the ship that are on the ground in the water. She reaches in, her arm disappears from view, and she pulls up several broken pieces of wood from the deck of the ship and the wall. Yeah, put that in his mouth. We're gonna about to move him right now. He's gonna need to chomp down on this. We're gonna move him in one, two, three. And she shoves the stick into his mouth. He begins to in extreme pain as you guys begin there, to Sonny. move him. Good, Sonny. Bear with you. Stay with me, Sonny. We're gonna go. We're gonna get you covered right now. He begins Dragon. dragging you. Uh, you begin dragging him towards the deck house of the ship, which is where Candela's cabin is on board, as well as the helm, which is on the second floor of the deck house. Pause there. In that moment. Leo, you are peering out of a round porthole window inside that self-same cabin you just watched as Malcolm ran off into the hellstorm outside. And all you can think about in this second is how long ago last night's fucking cocktails on the deck seemed to you. There are charts, maps, your belongings, bottles of perfectly good gin scrambling everywhere off the table in this room. Who do I see in this moment and what is going on? Um. Leo is is uh, older, um, although well put together. In, in, I'll say early forties and lie a little bit. Um, he is currently wrapped in a very very expensive robe that is very warm, with a little bit of a scarf because we are out at sea. I do not have the constitution for this sort of travel. This is really inappropriate. Um, he is doing his best to hold himself together, but. Uh, is appreciating that we are away from the weather and the elements, but close enough to a possible uh, life raft that we can get out. You see, and Malcolm ridiculous. Coming towards you. I am going to hold the door and wait for uh, you to get close enough, and then I'm going to flail it open and then close it as quickly as possible. Uh, sure, it is. You are pushing now against water that is streaming into your cabin. Why don't you make a? Uh, why don't you make a? We'll call this a control. <laughs> Roll. Delightful. Uh, I'm going to spend a drive. This is embarrassing. Uh, here we go. You're going to try to wedge the door open. Um, if I have three, if I have three, I don't have to take the lowest, correct? Uh, if you have. If I use a drive. If you use a drive. Oh, I get one. I'm so sorry. I did that wrong. Thank you. A five. It's a single roll. Yes. Okay. Uh, you push as as much as you're able, and you get it open by a, a foot. Um, water is pouring in from outside. Your hand is starting to get raw from the, it is, we are in deep autumn, late autumn, pushing in towards winter, and it is freezing out here. You hold the door open. Malcolm, you get there just in time to help grabbing your hand on the door. <sighs> pull, 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 pull it open. I am pulling, pull you need to push. Just a little bit more, just a little bit more. Come on, Sonny, we're gonna pull you in. The door opens, water gushes in, and Sonny collapses onto one of the beds in this room. Uh, Gabby, who is uh, the woman who is outside, comes running in as well, and she pushes past after you and goes to the exact opposite corner of the room, and she is in a state of shock. Mother above, we're not gonna make it out of this. The vast chasm is a quarter mile behind. Upstairs in the helm. Edgar, you are standing with the ship's captain and the helmswoman. You've been here for the last two minutes not saying a word. Nobody has uttered a single word as you watched through the windows out on the chaos of the deck, watching waves crash 20, 30 feet high in the air and crashing down on the deck of this place. You can't imagine how you're gonna survive the next hour. All that has gone down in this room for the last three minutes is tense breathing with three frightened people lost at sea. Who do we see and what is going on in your mind? You see a man standing off to the side, as out of the way as possible, in clothes don't, that wear him more than he wears them. And he acknowledges that he is sick, but he is observing it from the outside rather than feeling ill, he just acknowledges it. And he is watching this ocean that he has no control over 
and trying to accept that he can't change the situation he's in while watching people more skilled than he is at this particular situation and knowing he can't do anything about it. That might have been true moments ago, but now you watch as Malcolm has run out onto the deck of the ship in this nightmare, grabbed an injured crew member and dragged him all the way to your quarters underneath. You hear the screaming through the crash of thunder and the wind. And now you definitely hear it. One floor below you, you hear a woman screaming about the vast chasm and a man shrieking in pain down below. I charge downstairs to our cabin. Great, make a move roll for you as well as you go down the rain-streaked steps. Six. You manage to hold the railing and make your way down, slipping for a brief second, but you catch yourself. And as the door is swinging shut behind this group of people, you make your way in and find a crew member on the bed in the corner, blood drenching the sheets as uh, you assess the situation coming over. There is a chunk of wood that looks to be at least two or three inches long, protruding from his upper thigh in a very dangerous spot. Uh, Leo, give me my kit. I, oh, oh. Over in the corner, over there. Right, I cannot look at that right now. That is, oh, that is a lot. I am so sorry. Move out of the way. Okay, very, Walk over very to quick. examine it more closely. Okay. <coughs> what I'm gonna tell you now is that this is a deep wound very close to the aorta of this man, the artery, excuse me, the artery, just above in, the wound in the thigh. So dealing with it is going to be very precarious. If you're going to do anything, I'm gonna say it's a high stakes role. Not for you, but for Sonny. All right, open up my kids. What's, what's your name? Uh, Sonjin, uh, they, they call me Sonny. Sonny, pleasure to meet you. My name's Dr. Like Horus, I'm here to help you. <clears throat> now I need you to try and be very still. I'm gonna do everything I can to help you here. So just lie still. Malcolm. I need you to hold him. Hold him down. Where? Just on the bed. Keep him still as yeah. best as you can. Yep. Yeah. It's gonna be all right, right? You're gonna be just fine, son. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna be just fine. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have to do this slowly. Yeah, you're gonna have to be brave. Take be brave, Sonny. Hold of the piece of wood, and I'm going to slowly remove it. Okay. Close your eyes, Sonny. This will be a control roll for you. Four. Four. Okay. You slowly begin to pull at the jagged piece of wood in his thigh, and it splinters and starts to tear at the wound, taking part of it away with you. It is coming out. It's giving more resistance than you would care to be seeing. Okay. I take out... Um, take out a scalpel and a pair of forceps to put the forceps in and open the wound slightly, and then I'm going to make a small cut at the flesh that is caught to try and remove it to then remove the beast. You start to sever away at the man's living flesh to widen the area around your extraction. Now you do manage to pull this piece out of him and the artery you believe remains intact, but it is still a deep wound, and he's beginning to bleed pretty heavily. You're going to need to bind him fast, or you're going to lose him. Towel. Oh, I'm gonna to run to the bathroom, grab one, and barely looking, Hurry, throw how much time? Well, I shake him in that direction. I tie it around, and I pull as hard Ooh. as I can. The man's face goes pale as a sheet, and he blacks out entirely. That's probably better. I agree. Okay. But for the moment, it seems like you've got the wound taken care of. For the moment. Meanwhile, down in the belly of the ship, we find our cargo. This artifact, these bones of Atia Griffia rest within a relatively small, finely wrought, um, gold-lined chest. 
roughly the size of a child's coffin. The panels of this container are etched in alchemical sigils whose origins can be traced back to the ancient world. You have become somewhat familiar with these in your time in Candela. The gold and these etchings are what now keep the dangerous contents of this box from bathing you, every man and woman on board the ship, in the dangerous bleed of magic. It's currently secured with a rope to a pallet in the center of the cargo hold to keep it safe. It's here that we find you, Grimoria, sitting vigil over Atia's remains. There are two lanterns swinging from the ceiling in here, casting moving shadows on you and the room around you. The boat rocks sickeningly at the sea. You are in the belly of a whale. Who do we find here? Well, <clears throat> we find an 18-year-old young woman, slight of build, but mighty of spirit. That being said, she's never been on a boat before, or ship, or anything other than dry land. And she's using her entire body swallowing the bile that is like rising up in her throat every 20 seconds or so to maybe use her feet and her back up against another pallet maybe to just keep that pallet without trying to touch the box from moving. The pallet is wide. It is about, the case itself is quite small. Yeah. And ropes run over it down to metal rings on the edges of this pallet to keep it taut and in place. Yeah. And there is other cargo down here. There are barrels and wooden crates and you have your back pressed against a stack of them. Yeah. And though you are small of frame and so young, you are beyond worry with what is inside this chest and are pressing with conviction to hold it steady. Can I read the language that's on the box? Or am I just familiar with it? Well, you are familiar with it because you have been in possession of it right. for over 24 hours at this point. This was provided to you by the Red Hand. And there is some amount of shared overlapped knowledge and language between Candela and the Red Hand. They have different goals and purposes with ancient artifacts and the phenomenon encountered in this world, but they are both experienced in it. And what has been etched on the outside of this box is meant to contain right. the corrosive effects of what are inside. You hear steps above you. Someone comes boom, 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 down the wooden stairs into the hole, and it is uh, uh, an older crewman. He's uh, bearded and is, he's soaking wet and has like a large flopping down rain hat and raincoat on. <sighs> is everything uh, steady down here? I, I don't know. I, I mean, for now. But what if it? What if it? What if it's not? You it, got it tied down. More than it already is. No, no, it's good. All right. It's in that moment that you feel the floor beneath you buck and raise, nauseatingly high. Leo, I'll say that because of the bloody mess going on in the cabin, you have moved to the window and are staring out at sea because that is better at staring at the gore behind you. You watch as the deck of the ship rises into the air, cresting over a massive wave at sea, and then comes slamming terribly down into the ocean as an oncoming wave envelops the front of the ship. I need everyone, each in your place on this ship, to make a move roll to survive. No, this would be, yeah, move because you are trying to hold yourself steady and not be knocked senseless. Get your result and hold it for me. <laughs> Grimoria, we are with you, so we will start with you. It's a four. That is a four. You immediately grab onto the crates behind you, pressing into the pallet in front and behind. The man goes stumbling forward off of the steps, slick shoes and 
literally splays over you and falls slamming. His head strikes the corner of the golden chest, leaving a smear of blood along it. And he just crumples into the ground and begins to list sideways as the boat lists off to one direction. Be right back. Where are you at, Leo? Four. That's a four? Yes. <laughs> okay. You uh, are by the door, staring out a window. You manage to grip the window, um, and uh, as the boat begins to list to the side, you um, go careening into the side of the cabin, but manage to crash into uh, one of the beds in this room. You still slam a shoulder into the the, the back wall of it, but because you uh, coincided with the bed, you avoided, luckily, something much worse. You are now um, wedged into the side of the bed and the wall, embarrassingly, and you hate to look awkward. I hate all of this so much! Please. Malcolm, oh. what did you uh, get on your dodge roll? Malcolm's gonna get messed up right now. No. Oh. Malcolm rolled a two. A two. Mm. <clears throat> you are holding this man down as the doctor is at work. The entire ship lurches. You feel yourself rising up in the air and are thrown with Sonny backward across the room. You watch as your patient and your coworker slow motion careen through the air and slam into the opposite wall. You smash your left arm and shoulder hard and feel it go numb. You will take a body mark and collapse to the ground with a, a man bleeding on top of you. You see, uh, no you don't. What did you roll? Six. Six. You feel the boat start to give beneath you and you immediately grab hold of the end of the bed and feel yourself bucked in the air and then slammed back down on your feet. But you watch the soldier, the man who has pulled you out of a number of dangerous spots careening through the air, a bleeding sailor flying with him. They crash into the wall, into a heap on the ground, and this man, Sonny, you watch as the wound comes open on top of him and starts to glut on top of him and over uh, Malcolm's body as well. I just bought this vest. <laughs> <laughs> the woman, Gabby, starts screaming in the corner of the room, talking about the vast chasm and its proximity. You hear someone outside yell, Man of the board! <clears throat> I'm gonna go for a sunny, try and get him back on the bed and try and fix the problem at hand. Um, I'm sorry, my dear, what was your name again? Saying to the woman who's yelling. <laughs> what does it matter? Uh, because this is my operating room right now, and if you're just going to scream, I need you to go outside. Uh, uh, Gabby, my name is Gabby. Gabby, please shut up. And I go and grab the, I get Sonny. <clears throat> you drag Sonny uh, off of Malcolm. <clears throat> you see that your friend is still conscious, but in pain, you drag this man Let's be honest, he is starting to go on you, up onto the bed. Blood is pouring out of his leg. Is he still unconscious? Yeah, he is, okay. he's gone. All right, I'm going to, like if I, he's going to die if I just, I'll take a needle and thread out of my bag. Okay. I'm going to attempt to stitch up this wound. Can I make a suggestion? Yes. Do you think we might be able to cauterize it faster if we just cauterize the whole wound with something hot? Do we have something hot in here? Burn the flesh. Uh, is there a fire in a fireplace anywhere or anything like there that? There is not a fireplace in here, not on this is ship. There a gas no. stove? Uh, there is a gas stove in the kitchen, which would mean going out on deck and traveling a little bit. Uh, I have a lighter. That'll I don't know work. if that's enough, uh, but. Give me your oh, lighter. Okay, there, here, here. <clears throat> I'm gonna take the lighter and yeah. I'm gonna pull a, um, uh, I'm just gonna, is there something large and metal in the room? Some sort of like a, maybe a, a like a, 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 something flat or, or something? There like. is tons of metal in here. There's a metal chairs okay. in here, two of them, okay. which you could drag over and heat that. Yeah. All right, I will, I will take that. I'll take the leg of a, um, take one of the metal chairs and I'm gonna try and heat one of the ends of the leg okay. to, to drain. Oh, 
Gabby, why don't you come with me? Let's go upstairs. I think it's a little more calm up there. Okay. Hi. I'm okay. Leo. Why don't you just come right with me? It's going to be okay. It doesn't fucking matter. Oh, no, it feels terrible, but I've survived worse. Come on. You two head outside into the rain. Oh, wait, I thought we were going up. Uh, you have to go, go outside to do that. Are we going to? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> How far? Uh, well, it is not too far to the stairs that lead up to the helm room, or you can double back around the side and head to, there is a kitchen back there, there is a radio room. Oh, I'm not going alone, damn. Um, I thought it was just upstairs. I understand. I'm just going to take her into the side then and just have a conversation. Okay. And, hi, it's going to go, what are you doing on the ship anyway? Well, I mean, I'm, uh, uh, I'm, I'm mostly helping the kitchen. Oh, do you know the captain at all? Have you met him? Captain Diverson, yes, I do. How much do you know about him? Because I did a little research. He's actually survived four, four storms before coming around this before. He has a very good record. I hate sailing, and he's apparently the safest ground to go. I've been with him for about a year. We've never been in a storm. This was a long time ago. (laughs) You know, clearly these don't happen very often. There's not a lot of people who've had quite that many. Would you do me a favor and make a sway roll? Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm also gonna burn a dry for this. As this is happening, by the way, while you are trying to calm this woman and you are trying to figure out how you can save this man who is on the edge, there is screaming from outside, multiple voices now. Someone is yelling, Heath, Heath, hold on. There are two or three people now on the deck screaming. But go ahead. Six. Six. You catch her into a trance almost. She just is lost in your eyes. It's going to be absolutely fine. Let's just talk like people. How often do we get to talk like people? This is this is the sort of opportunity we have to just let loose anything we've been holding back, anything you want to say. Just just it's I time. Wish I wasn't huh, doing this job anymore. I think you've had enough of this, yes. I've always wanted to work on stage. Well, I mean, honestly, once we get back, there's plenty of small restaurants. I know a coffee shop. You do just a little bit of part-time work there. You have time to go to auditions, take a class. I know somebody. We can, yeah, we that have to That sounds crazy. I know. Hold that thought. Yes. <laughs> back to the medical situation. So I'm heating up the uh, like the, the the metal foot of this chair to try and get it so I can place it against the skin and cauterize this while I'm heating it. I say, Malcolm, are you awake? Yeah, I'm fine. You awake? Yeah, no, I'm good. Can you move your arm? Yeah, it's like 50-50, Doc. Extreme stiffness, but it is functional. I think they might need help outside if you're feeling up to it. I'm always feeling up to it. You know how I am. Yeah. And I'm, is it hot enough? Yes. All it right. begins to glow slowly. It's a good thing you're unconscious. <laughs> you wake him out of it, screaming in pain as he sits straight up. I try and push him back down. <clears throat> uh, he fights against it. You can make a mo- You can make a control roll for that. Okay. Four. Four. Uh, he swats you in the face, knocks your glasses uh, off your face, but you manage to push him down. The metal is hot. You can feel it getting hotter in your own hand. You have to stay put for just a minute. Can I assist in holding him down too? <clears throat> yes. Yeah, I'm not going to make a roll for that. You then push him down. Uh, he is pressed into the bed. He is starting to like sweat visibly and hyperventilate and passes out under your, uh, under your grip. The, the wound is raw and starts to char, and the bleeding slows, at least. Enough time for you to take some of that towel and wrap it tight again and pull as hard as you're able and staunch the flow. Whether this guy's gonna make it through the night, you don't know, but you've addressed the problem in the moment. Malcolm, you are heading out onto the deck? Yes, sir. Okay, you stride out into the chaos. There are now uh, there are now three men out there, out there screaming, uh, looking off the port side of the ship, and you can just barely make out uh, a fourth man uh, in the ocean. Water is just enveloping him, and he reappears. He doesn't have a life jacket on. He's got nothing. Right. He's just out at sea. There are, on each side of the ship, two life preservers tied up on the sides with rope, 
He is out there. Okay. I want to. I want to. Um, I want to immediately go to the to the to the uh, the life preservers. I want to see if I can get a rope, and I want to. I want to fasten the rope to the life preserver and try to see if I can throw it out to him from to grab on. Good news is it is already tied on. One end is tied to the ship, and the other is out there. So you're going to try to heave it out towards this guy with my good with my with my good arm that's not struck because I have more power in that arm. Right. A lasso. A lasso. Would throw it as, as hard as I can out to Go the ocean. Go for it. I need you to make a, uh, we're gonna call this, we're gonna call this control. 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 <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna burn a drive on this. Okay. I want the guy to live. Fours. Four. Two fours you got? Two fours. A pair of fours, okay. Pair of fours. You get a beat on him, he disappears for a second, you wait till he's there again, and you can see that he is moving slowly, getting pushed to one direction, so you actually aim and throw off to the side. The good news is it lands about five or six feet to the left of where you last saw him, and he resurfaces just a foot or two away, and his arms are just beating the water around him, and he feels it before he sees it and grabs on for dear life. The bad news is that a second massive wave, 40 feet high, comes along the uh, starboard side of this ship and slams into everyone on board. Damn. Make another uh, move roll for me, and it is high stakes. I have one drop of burning. Yeah, I'll burn it. If I were there, I would. I would. No, I couldn't help. <laughs> oh. Candela. Candela. <laughs> <laughs> you feel it before you 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 see it. You can just hear a roaring, rising crash behind you and you throw your hands out as soon as you see that thing land and the guy grab it you hear your death coming and your hands reach out at waist level and you feel yourself pushed forward and a wall of water envelops everyone on deck and another person in the crash of the wave you can just see them as you are underwater for a moment fly past you and off the side of the ship. The wave moves past the entire boat, and we'll get to your dodge rolls in a moment. The entire ship lists to one side to the point where you feel like it is going to go under and then slowly comes back. You are hanging on. Two people in the drink. Hold that thought. All of you, please make a dodge roll for me. Uh, dodge roll? Yes. Which one of the That's move? under move, yeah. Okay, it's just move. subset of move. Okay. I'm gonna spend a drive on that. Yeah. So that means I add one. Yeah, yeah. Right? Right. Oh. Fuck. Three. Ooh. Five. Five. Well, you're. No, you're, you're fine. Fine. Oh, it's. Hold five. that luck for later, <laughs> my friend. Oh, hot damn it. Five. Oh, of course I get five. Four. Four. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, the two of you inside uh, the cabin with Gabby and this man feel the entire ship go sideways for what feels like an eternity, and you lift off your feet, and this time you're not so lucky. You do slam into uh, the wall, both of you. Uh, you strike your knee and thigh, the point of impact is there, and it smashes into the area where your scar rises up your body, which is always a little tender, especially so now. Um, Leo, you feel your face strike a table as you cartwheel across the room. Uh, you see stars for a moment and land in a heap on the ground. Gabby is unconscious next to you. There is a ringing in your ears. The strike was so hard. So that is one body, one body. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you got a three. Mm. You feel 
the pressure that existed between the pallet and the crates behind you that held you in place, you try to push as much as you can, but the sudden jerk of motion rips you free, and you watch and feel like the ship is almost spiraling, except it's you, and your head strikes a post connected to the wooden rail and stairs coming down in here. Uh, your vision explodes in white stars, and then you feel yourself crash into the floor and just are barely able to perceive the floor righting itself and rocking down in the belly of this beast. Also at this moment, there is a mast on this steamship that holds an auxiliary sail in case of emergency. Unfortunately, as this small tidal wave strikes it and the boat comes back, the mast begins to bend, crumple, and break, plummeting down into the battened hatches. The hatches, which normally have hatchwork holes that uh, let light down in, but during a storm like this, you cover and seal. And now that cover and seal is rocked by the mast, crashing down on top of it. Down below, you vaguely become aware of water pouring in and sloshing into your face here in the cargo hold. But what's worse, What's worse is the feeling in your teeth, in the back of your skull, as you begin to feel the corrosive effects of bleed on your body. And as your eyes flicker awake in the cargo hold, you see the golden chest, ropes split, lying in the side of the cargo hold open, and one or two bones on the floor of the cargo hold, pulsing with green alchemic light. I'll be back. Two men at sea. Two not very physical men on the ground, and you are holding on. What the hell are we doing in this shitstorm? Oh, good, she's asleep. Uh, <coughs> patient. Yeah. Hey, where's Grimora? I was just thinking the same thing. Uh, sadly, uh, uh, Malcolm left before I could ask him to run down. She was going. She was heading downstairs last time. I Leo, as you stand with your now very bruised side of the face and eye, you see out that same porthole window you are staring out of earlier, and you can see a greenish, sickly light wafting up out of the hatches on the deck of the ship behind Malcolm, who doesn't even see it yet in the storm. And the sheets of rain that are coming down are all illuminated in this one particular area hovering over the hold. You know what the fuck is up. I think we have to get down there. What, what's, what am I doing right now? Am I, am I holding, am I holding there on? There is a kill? rope taut against the side of the ship. One man uh, holding onto the life preserver 60 feet away in the drink right. and another one attempting to swim towards him. I'm not normally supposed to roll, but I'm going to roll for this other person because I'm just curious and I don't want to decide. <laughs> okay, he got a five. Uh, this other crew member begins to fight his way through the crash of endless waves in this storm and grabs hold of the rope itself, not the preserver, but he manages to get caught about two-thirds of the way to his friend, and you begin to hoist. Why don't you make a, uh, hmm. You can make a strike or control move for this. We'll do a strike. Okay. <clears throat> because this is muscle. This is hard work. Fuck. Two. Two? <clears throat> You begin to pull as hard as you can, and it does give, and you feel the coils 
You can feel the texture of the rope pulling over the side of the fence as you go. And after five or six pulls, you're getting it. You're getting it. And then suddenly, you feel it give way. You don't let go. You just feel a lack of resistance. And you see over the edge, about 35 feet away, that preserver has broken free. And that man is starting to waft away from the ship. And the boat is slowly lurching its way away from him. How far away are they from, from where I initially threw the life for the first one? There's two. They're about 35 or 40 feet away from the ship. There is a uh, ladder, like a rope ladder, that is affixed to the side of the ship. So if one of them were able to get close, or if you wanted to, one can go down into the drink, or one could hopefully swim their way back. Or one could live to see another day. Their lives are I literally I can, I can, in your go. hands. All right, I'll go down into the drink. Okay. I could never forgive myself if I let them perish. You two start moving towards the doorway, thinking about Grimoria and seeing the, the extreme danger that is lying in the center of this ship. You watch as Malcolm hoists himself over the side of the ship, and you guys lock eyes with him just as he's about to lower out of sight. Malcolm! Gamoria! Now! Just wish me luck, guys. Now! And I am stairs. screaming. Are you on your way down? Because you don't see Gamoria. She is no, down we here. we are trying to get him. So you're yelling to Malcolm? Yes. Oh, you want Malcolm? Yes. Okay. Do I see the green? Do I see the green in the distance? Do I see it? We're, we're uh, I, I'll, say, I'll say it is loud out here, and you, you can hear Gamoria! Ah! But it is masked by the sound of the storm. Why don't you make a, a survey? Survey. Oh, yeah. Just to tell me if you understand what you're leaving behind. I don't want to stop you. Mm. I'm coming for you. I got a four. Uh, okay. <laughs> you hear Leo's voice screaming, and it causes you to pause just for a second. And you, uh, like, dart your head around, and you see him. You see wild looks in these two men's eyes. And you're like, what the hell? Is, is wrong and you scan the ship and you see it, it was behind you about 20 feet behind you. You don't know for how long there is death wafting up from below. And in that moment of indecision, do I stay, do I go? Your grip loses, slips and death you begin to- Death and I'm gonna tend to these two right here. You don't even get that last bit out. You fall into the ocean below. You lost your grip. Oh, man and you plunge into ice-cold ocean water, and you can hear <laughs> somewhere maybe 25, 30 feet away. Okay. Let's pause you there. Oh. You two, on the deck of the ship, at the door of your cabin, see the uh, hatches glowing from below. Uh, you haven't heard from Grimoria in the last 10 minutes. You don't know how she is. And we just saw that. You see him go down, and you see the light coming up from above, and you know that she was keeping vigil in the hold. Are there are there any obvious uh, um, life preservers or anything like that sitting up there? There is one more preserver on the side that you just saw Malcolm disappear from, and there are two on the other side, but they are bound to that side of the ship. Is the other one bound, or is the other one? They are all, yes. The, the way they are attached is they're, the rope, they are rolled up, and stowed there, but one end is affixed to the, the, the ring of the life preserver and one is firmly uh, attached to the ship. How, how long do you think it would take to, to I don't know. Um, I'm, we don't have bloody time. I, if it's on the way, I'm gonna try and just give it a tug and see if it, it will, I'm not even gonna throw it, I'm it, just gonna try and loosen it. And, and just let it go down into the drink? Somebody will fucking find it. Uh, um, yeah, you don't need to roll for that. You, it, it is there for help, it is there for this moment. So you yank it free and pull off sort of a tie on it that lets it open, and then just, what, let it drop into it's, the drink? He went down, I'm just letting it go down where he went okay, down. Okay, you drop it into the ocean and it is bobbing in the sea below. I'm heading bloody typical. Do I hear of course, them you coming? Like this. Through a foggy haze, a concussion haze, you can hear shouts at the top of the stairs now. I think if I if I can manage to say in a really small voice, like, don't come down here. Stay where you are. <clears throat> it comes out of you in a croak. Um, 
and there is I'm not going to make anyone roll. It is hell outside. You are in the worst storm of your life and you can they have to shout to be heard above. But you do on your side your face blossoming in a bruise on the side. Um weakly croak out your warning to them. While I do that, uh can I like fish into my pocket? I I would like I mean, I she's really there are no good options at this point. So she's gonna try to, I'm gonna try to get like a small book of like occult texts. Yes. And and I think I know it well enough where I could find the chapter where there are ancient sort of, I don't know, um, maybe like holding spells or spells of protection against bleed of this sp- specific kind of magic. And I know that I'm dealing with something that's way bigger than a book can probably tell me, but if it can, get me five seconds to come up with a plan, I will try. Well, yes and no. It's a two-part response to that. First of all, did I ask you to take a bleed yet? Not yet. Take a bleed. Okay, (laughs) what kind of boost a bleed? That's the first. Yeah. As this eons old artifact, this dead woman's bones radiate with magical entropy. It is beginning to get into your bones. But you uh, stiffly pull a small journal that you keep on you at all times with notes that you have written in the past. Why don't you do me a favor and make a focus roll so in this moment you can try to make heads or tails of notes you've taken in the past and this chest, which you understand its purpose, but you didn't craft it. Okay, I'm gonna take a drive for that. Okay. Oh wait. Yeah. Fuck. A four. Four. Okay. You begin to flip. Again, your mind is half numb, but you begin to flip through these pages. This is in the moments of these men yelling to each other. Everything is happening in in unison. (laughs) And you you pause on two pages where you once uh, um, wrote down notes on, on wards and protection. Uh, and, and it is the alchemical practice that goes into um, the devices that Candel uses to soak in bleed, but this is more elaborate. Cool. And you weakly look at this chest, which is toppled over and open like a V on the ground, and the notes you've taken, this is probably 11 months old, these notes, but you can see somehow in this haze that, uh, that, and many of the glyphs of the old time are circular, that there are sigils in a specific order that you've encountered at least five times in the past, which is what led to making these notes. And there is a, a disc on the front of this chest that is circular and has sigils that are not exactly the same, but similar. And you can tell that they're in the wrong place. Mm. And they are on what looks like a separate standalone uh, disc of brass or gold, apart from the chest itself. Somehow that is a ward that is not working right now. Yeah. You are in the ocean. You are starting to go numb all over. And there are two men at the distance. You could, this is insane. You could easily die right now. You could change your mind right now. I won't make you roll. You can climb the ladder right now and go help your friends. You don't know these guys. I gotta push forward. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta save them. Same as it ever, it okay. ever was. It's not what you did in the war, and it's not what you do now. And you plunge off into the drink to get to these guys. It's, this is definitely a move roll. I'm gonna burn a drive. I replenished it, both moved our nerve drives because I had two marks. And I have the ability of adrenaline rush, and that gives me the ability to, each mark I take, I can immediately refresh a drive, a point of my choice. Yes, every time I sting you with a mark, you get a little bonus treat of a drive returned. Because you are amped on adrenaline right now. Yes, you are. Candela. 
Candela. Is it a single six? Dude. Just a reminder. Oh, I believe you. Yeah, I just two. want you guys to tell me if you get two sixes no, because that a single, is that's, a single. that's great. You uh, are alive. The ocean shocks you more awake than you've ever been and you dig yourself through this moving serpent of an ocean and you get to the first man who is still hanging on to the rope. You just couldn't feel him before, but the other man is another 10 feet past. You pull your, you, well, you don't pull yourself. You find the edge of the rope and take it, and I'm, we're gonna use that six to have you swim further and get to this guy and wrap the rope around your own arm and his. Do I wanna let you swim back on that six? You do. I don't. You do. <laughs> I don't. I do not. I want you to make another move roll for me to go in the opposite direction. Because I'm a little shit. Roll those dice. I'm gonna burn another drive. Five. Five. Okay. Johnny Five is alive. <laughs> one-handed, much more slowly, because you can't swim, but you manage to use this python here to slowly pull yourself and this man closer and closer to the next man. And then you guys are a little knot on the end of a charm bracelet in hell, and you start to pull yourself up. And I'm gonna say the stress of this, the strain of this, it doesn't feel like you should survive. Hopefully you will, but you're going to take a brain. You make it to the bottom of the ladder that is disappearing and reappearing by the ocean water, swelling and lowering every couple of seconds. And you begin to, I will not make you roll to climb this ladder. You see these two men up ahead of you and you begin to climb your own way up and you splatter on the deck of this ship into six inches of water there as well. The three of you alive and whole. Hold that thought, Malcolm. Doc, Leo, where are we? What are we doing? It's heading Running downstairs. Down they hold. Yes. Okay, you get down below, and here is what you find. The pallet is ripped open. There are crates and boxes askew down below, and you see first, it's hard to miss, this golden chest, this small golden chest cracked open off on the side, on the port side of the cargo hold down below. You see 18-year-old Grimoria on the ground, journal in hand, staring, and uh, water has been leaking down through the uh, broken hatches above, and she and this book are starting to get uh, soaking wet, and there is an inch or two of water in her, catching every time the ship lists to one side, the water moves with it, and these two what look like leg or arm bones are just drifting and bringing their green arcane sickness with them as they move. There is also Edgar, uh, a crew member down here, lying on their back unconscious, and one side of their face and chest and arm is eaten away and there is just a steady stream of red and black and green particulates wafting off this person's body. It's as if 25% of their face bleeding down into their neck and chest is gone. And there is just this sickly, it almost looks like steam down here. It is not entirely unfamiliar to you. Different but reminiscent over a great many years. You can see, I'm sorry, parts of the orbital area of the inner eye. You can see teeth and the side of his tongue because there is nothing there. <coughs> go, go for her. And I'm Darling, a... we're getting out of here. No, 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 no she's I'm... fighting. I'm gonna fight you. Because <laughs> I, I, I feel like she, if no one, if if anyone can can stop this, it's it's her. It's her. The haze, the pain. Yeah. It is is gone. It is less numbness now, less of a fog, and more 
intense pain in the side of your face, which brings with it clarity. Yeah. And you fight off Leo, turning towards this golden chest on the ground and 20 feet away from you, these bones. You are trying your best to help your friend. I am. What do you need to get us out of here right now? And I think, I think, uh, like in the clarity, so I can't believe I'm doing this the first episode. Um, I, I would like to use the prestige to um, channel someone that I encountered uh, back in, in my time, which is a very slim amount of time, um, uh, an ancient priest or priestess, someone that I've encountered through an object. For clarity for the audience, yes. you are a bit in tune with the spirit world, yes? Just a bit. So when you say that you encountered this person, you encountered a spirit. A spirit, yes. In your work. In my work, which I can explain, but I don't know if we have time. Maybe we'll get to that later. Great. Um, but for the people watching at home, <laughs> yeah. I want them to know that you're not phoning a friend. No. And I think it's like, an, like a Rolodex, though, in her mind, and like stops at this one person. And I want to say it's an old ancient priest uh, who was the high priest of whatever temple they had in an old fair. And this is a, a real gamble because she doesn't know if, if this, uh, if kind of bringing these bones back in the box or closing the box requires physical um, touch, which clearly is not going well for this crew member, or if it's something, if someone powerful enough can do it with a word. Understand, you want to, because when you commune with these spirits, and it doesn't happen often, spirits and encounters with them and phenomenon in this world are few and far between, but you have been having encounters like this since you were a child. Yeah. And you have at least 10 times, probably more come face to face with moments like that. And maybe about halfway through those encounters in Old Fair, your first trip there, you did touch the wrong bronze knife and felt a life that was not your own flood into you. It lasted only a minute and a half maybe at that time, but you have carried a ghost of memories ever since. And it haven't, hasn't been able to learn how to free them. So they've sort of, they don't live in her mind, but the memories live in her mind. And she takes them with her wherever she goes. So you step back into this long dead person's mind and take a bleed for doing so. Yep. So you have two bleed. Yeah, um, and it's, it sort of looks like to her when she is channeling someone, it kind of looks like uh, peering through the opposite end of a telescope mm -hmm. where everything just gets like really far away and she's begging for this person to take control and hope that he can assess the situation very quickly. Okay. Um, since we're off, uh, off rules a little bit, I would like you to make a sense roll. And I'm gonna give you a free drive, because I like the cut of your flair. Thank you. Okay. She gets everything she wants. All right, here we go. I'm gonna use my gilded die, too. Four. Four. On the gilded die. On the gilded die, yeah. so you get a drive back. Nice. In in uh, intuition. Great, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, um, are you just taking their memory, or are we seeing anything different? Yeah, I mean, hey, if we're gonna spend it, we'll spend it. Um, I think you can see her uh, sort of like, kind of um, hunch a little bit. She's already pretty short, but she's somehow getting shorter, and. Um, taking on sort of like ancient looking clothing. I want to say, you know, for reference, like maybe um, like almost an Egyptian sort of 
uh, an ancient Egyptian um, sort of look, like darkly painted eyes. You can tell this is a man of like great honor and like position. Um, but even so, his work has like taken a toll on his body. So I think he looks a little hunched over, um, a little worse for wear, and and it's kind of shocking to see this young girl turn into a pretty old man. I want to say like in his probably 70s, which was back then pretty old. Yes. Yeah. Let me let me put a spin on it for everyone who's conscious in this room. Um, in the light of uh, these uh, bones down here with water spilling in, and again, there's two uh, lanterns on chains just swinging around. So it is shifting light show down here, and you could swear in the glare of all of these conflicting light sources that your friend is now an old, old man and takes a few hobbling steps forward. Maybe he uh, has like a cool cane or something. He now has a cool cane and steps <laughs> along. Really, Grimoria's hand is out in front of her and in flashes of light you see this cane appearing for glimpses. Grimoria, your vision twists away and this chest, which was like 15 or 20 feet, now just seems to spiral away down a corridor and yet the sigils that run up the backs and the back and sides and front of this thing begin to have meaning mm. they're not translated but you understand what you're seeing and you know that that circular disc at the front is a lock is a seal and needs to be put in its place to bring language into clarity and seal them in but first, you have to get the bones in. Get the bones in. Okay. Or someone does. Think about that for a second. Malcolm, you are sputtering water out, as well as these other two people. You're in a bit better shape than they are. You see green light wafting up from below, and the ship is just rocking. The, um, I will say the storm clouds are a little less hairy, not much. Um, but it feels like the the eye of the storm, the, the absolute dark center of it, which has just been perched on top of you guys for almost an hour, is shifting somewhat behind, but it is still a terrible mess around. And there is still water sloshing around on the deck, and you can see it's spilling down below and green death coming up. What are we going to do? Well, I immediately notice this, I'm going to go down and I'm going to help my friends okay. make sure they're okay. Okay, then we are all met. So in this moment where you start to hobble across, you hear heavy footfall down the stairs and suddenly the circle of the Crimson Mirror is together. The quartet is whole in the belly of this beast. Everybody, take a bleed. Oh my God. Wait, I think I'm, I think I'm out. Then. No, you're not. Okay. You have three bleed as the prolonged effect of this artifact is digging its way into your bloodstream. Uh, Gamora, what do you need? Uh, I, I don't I don't know if I hear that through the, the thing I'm on. It, what I'm sort of picturing is um, this man has a tall sort of head a, a piece, of some kind, and piece. I think, I mean, he's gonna take it off and try to scoop the bones using his hat mm. back into uh, at least close enough to the box. I am going to dicker with you okay. and tell you that it's the form that comes around you is a mental construct. God. And while you have brought some of the consciousness and thoughts from the last couple thousand years, you have not brought his physical belongings with him. Right, right. Um, is there anything uh, that I can sort of dig through his experiences to maybe um, make, uh, have a spell that maybe can temporarily render the effect of the bones useless? Oh, you have many talents, Grimoria. Spells is not one of them. But does he have spells? <laughs> <laughs> Should have asked him when you had the chance. Oh, man. he's here! Uh, well. The memories you received at that time yeah. are with you. I will say 
that these bones are radiating outward and sliding around the hull. This man's face continues to uh, disappear. It's about half gone now. Um, and uh, anyone have a box? Edgar, also, oh, you begin to see just a little bit of black shadow tracing away from this man's skull. Mm. Um, all right, Edgar goes into his kit. He puts on gloves. Take a brain, by the way. Puts on gloves. <sighs> Takes a deep breath. Wait, hold on. I can help. I think the closest one's right there. I'm gonna try and like track it and send you in the right direction to the closest one. Okay. So I'm, I'm gonna, gonna use survey, if that's all right. To, uh, survey? Search track spot. In the world, what are we trying to do? We, are, trying we to know very him, well where these bones I'm gonna, are. I'm gonna, okay, they are, they are visible. They're Never mind. So oh, they're glowing radioactive green. Guessing okay. what has to be done there you from are. the attempted shoveling, Yes. Uh, <laughs> Edgar is going to run across, try and run over and as fast as he can for his end to hold these bones as little time as possible is going to grab them and throw them in the box. Throw them in the box? Yeah. Okay. Oh, no. Okay. Um, Why? Well, I want to go, I, well, where's the box? Where is uh, the box right From now? your point of view, and you're halfway down some stairs, okay. nothing's in the box now, baby. It's out of the box. You're halfway down the stairs. They are in a little bit of a semicircle or triangle facing away from you, and the box is a good, it's about 10 feet away from Grimoria, who has just taken a couple of little uh, hobbling steps towards it, and you see as she sort of like bends even further down, and her hands scoop through the air a little bit and pauses there. He begins to move forward. Now, I do have an ability that may not be applicable here, but I want to see if you'll let me get away with Did it. You? I have dissection. Mm -hmm. When you use a focus roll to inspect or dissect a piece of organic matter, I'm not affected by bleed, and I gild an additional die. Yes, that's right. And you said you're wearing gloves? I'm wearing gloves. Okay. So, you are able to approach, and the exposure just to the air down here for too long is going to be lethal for all of you. But you walk through uh, this uh, burning sensation that you can feel again in your teeth and, I'm and the entire left side of my body flare up all up those marks up the one side of your body and the the the, the bones are sort of pulsating and it's the pain in your body goes in waves <clears throat> along with it you're standing above them the box is knocked over on its side two of these bones are on the ground a wash in the corner you're using ha that skill? Using that skill, having handled bleed-infused flesh and organic matter before, I'll try and pick them up as gently as possible and move them into the box as quickly as possible. <clears throat> okay. Can I, can I ask a question? Yes. I have a, I, I have a bleed containment vial. Can our containment vials dampen the effects that the bones are giving off right now? I mean, I know it's powerful, but can we, like, can we offset it just a little bit, weaken it just a little bit so mm. that it gives it more If you time? wanted to say retroactively, and I'm fine with that, because mm -hmm. we're new in our story and with our characters and, and functions that we have. If you want to say that you, rather than taking that bleed, shielded yourself, I would allow that to transpire. Okay, all right, I'll do that. Okay, so you are, can, we can erase that bleed. Okay, all right. And it was soaked. Where was it soaked? Yeah, it was soaked. So this is my, this is my hand. Might be time to tell us. When I was with my unit, uh, before the Great War was over, I was sent to investigate a phenomenon with my squad. And um, upon investigating, it was an artifact that was loose and glowing. And it evaporated my entire squad. And in, in doing so, I reached out to one of my members with this hand. I attempted to grab him and to try to hold him in. And this energy evaporated my hand to the point to where the flesh is almost all gone off of it and there's just nubs right here. Disintegrated my fingertips all the way down to the nubs. And this right here is a special prosthetic that I use so I can still function in battle and in life. Um, and it covers the scars, but also it's a little levers and triggers. It's about 
about an almost like gauntlet size and it's made out of copper. Rivets can be seen on each digit and I'm able to have 75% to 85% function depending on the, the day and the weather. Um, and within it, I have uh, my bleed detector as well as my bleed uh, uh, containment vial. Right, so built into a compartment built in that hand. Compartment that's right in the center <clears throat> of my of my, uh, my prosthetic hand. And as soon as you come down those stairs, you feel the corrosive effects of this artifact and grip your hand and absorb as much as you can in there. This is an ongoing threat, right. so it has uh, tidied you over for now. Right, the limit. So, uh, doctor. I'm gonna meet you in the middle. Yeah. Because these bones once belonged to a flesh and blood person. That was a very long time ago, and I can't swear by the chemical composition of their inside anymore. So, I'll tie it to a roll. Uh, give me a, let's make it a focus roll as you attempt to not be horrifically scarred by touching these. Five gilded. Five gilded. <clears throat> okay. So you kneel down before them, your face awash in their light, and you are gloved, so you take some confidence in that, and you are very familiar with the structure of human anatomy. You attempt to grip each bone in the most slender portion of, uh, of each limb and lift as carefully as you can, just the same way you've removed uh, sort of hazardous materials from bodies before in the world's most dangerous game of operation. Uh, you can feel the burn in your fingertips as you start to lift one bone in. Uh, the chest is still upside down at the moment. Flip it! Can, uh, and then <laughs> I think Grimoria slash old man hears this, uh, takes the cane mm -hmm. and just feebly, but you know, powerfully, I guess, kind of try, tries to either uh, hook it and flip it or just hook it and then can I run it down. Wash. Hmm? Can I run to assist her with that? I was, I was, well, I was pretty close. Yeah, everyone at this point, can but run to assist. Yeah, Multiple was, people can assist. Yeah, and so obviously the cane doesn't work, but she can use her foot. <laughs> She's uh, using right, her foot. Right. You again. You you become a wash in two places yeah, at once yeah. in moments like this, and yeah. so for a split second you remember and yeah. then get your hands on it. Now your fingers touch the inside, and it is. You can feel the burn it's reaching the through. Foot. Oh, your foot? Yeah. That's fine too. It is. She is wearing a shoe. It is heavy. It is made of gold. You start to lift. You are slight of frame. You guys are assisting. Yeah, I'm yes. running over this. Okay. Assist. Does that mean we're adding lift uh, my foot. drive, or you're or you're just coming in for flavor? No, I'm out of drive. I don't have nerve drive, but I'm there for flavor. <laughs> okay, Unless great. We, yeah. So Can you I guys come move? over and and everyone starts nope, nope. to try to nope. get a get a, a a foot under. And it, Leo, you place your hand on this old man. Gramoria's shoulder uh, for support. I think you would make a uh, make a control roll for me because it's super heavy. Oh, and I got a drive. Uh, you have so, so, so that drive. means yeah. I you take. Drive. Oh, and I can spend my own drive. Yes, yes. So yes. Two die roll. Two die roll. Okay, great. Because I have not. Yes. Okay, great. Yeah. Oh, come on, baby. Four. Four. Yeah, four is like my fucking number mm. Okay. Uh, do you have a? You don't have a, a, a resistance there. I do. You can use the resistance to. You can use the oh, resistance yeah. to reroll. One or. I, yeah. How much can How much can I reroll if I use a resistance? If you use a resistance, you can only use the base of the stat. So Which you is can't zero. add in any drives. Just, you can't. It's just one yeah, die. That's then. A kind of a long shot, but yeah, you could do it. Shot. Worth it. Well, if it was the base of the stat, then you'd be rolling you two die. You got a four, which is a mixed success. What do you think? I'll keep the four. You keep the four? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. you lift and you, f if for a split second you think you're not gonna be able to do it because this, I don't know if it is solid gold, but this thing has gold built all around it. Yeah. That is something that you guys 
are aware of in Candela that gold in the old world was often used as a, a barrier. Uh, it, took, it took a knowledge of alchemy and then gold was often a component. So this thing is heavy and you lift with all your might, you think you're not gonna do it, but then you feel Leo's hand on your shoulder squeezing. Uh, and then Malcolm is at your other shoulder and you just feel comforted a little bit and you lift and it manages to clatter backwards. Um, but the combination of everything that has happened, the storm, the, the bones themselves, the injuries that you and obviously your friends have taken, it's too much. You take a brain. Is this no, I'm just Edgar, the box hits the ground and manages to land with the back, the, the lid hanging open. You're able to drop, drop the bones the in. Shut it. Shut it down. Grimoria, you see this disc now that just clamps into place yeah. and you can tell that it is not in the right position. Okay. So, um, let's get it in position. I need you to make a survey roll. I can help with this. Survey, okay, and, okay. I, and I will also have And that drive. is to understand this. So help. Three. Yeah. What's the, that? This alchemical wheel that the red hand has crafted to seal the bones in this box. I've been doing this for, for a little bit of time. I've read a few things I can help. Uh, uh, yes. A, you're yes, I'm adding a, adding a drive to oh, this. Oh, thanks. Four? Yeah. Okay. okay. That's good. Is, uh, no, that's good. That's good enough. Ready? Okay. Oh my god. I'm gonna fudge. Can I add? Can I add a? Can I add a resistance to her? For the fact. Can I? Re can I resist? Can I add? No, I don't have, have resistance. <gasps> not. All failures. Yeah, they're all ones. No. Wait. Wait. You've got. No way. You. You would have three because if you only have three here and three here, you would have three. So I do have. You do have a resistance. Yeah. I am gonna use my resistance. So just roll one. 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 Jeez. Come on, baby. Do me good. Four. <laughs> She's gonna be dead in the first episode. <clears throat> oh my god, thank you. <laughs> so, here's what happens. You lay hands on the physical chest and this wheel, and as soon as you do, it burns at the touch like fire and ice in one and you begin to turn the wheel and watch as three or four sigils, which mean more than they should to you now as you see through the double vision of a long dead old man and your own, and they slide and stop, and you know that that is not right. And you continue, and you watch as two of the sigils at different points on the clock change literally in front of your eyes. And because you have the knowledge of the ancients with you, you then reverse direction. You just know that it is right and turn back and it clicks in place where it was and all of the sigils and all of the line work all over the chest. It is faint, but there is a thin little shimmer over every single line at once. And all of you in here hear a little <coughs> And then Grimoria collapses on top of the chest, taking too much bleed. The bones are contained and Grimoria, whether it is exhaustion, physical pain, or the damaging effects of magic in this world, you men don't know, she falls still and unconscious on top of this golden chest. The rain actually has abated at this point. You, it's not gone, but you have been too distracted to focus on anything but imminent danger and your friend, who you were afraid is dying in front of you. With time, crew members come and duck their heads down here, telling you that the storm has indeed moved past and behind the dandridge towards the vast chasm behind you. 
it slowly, slowly starts to sink in that you are not going to die tonight. Oh, well, we need to bring um, both Grimori and this man up, up, upstairs. I need to take a look at them both. All right, let me help you. Okay, so in the rain, and now it is just rain, Malcolm lifts Grimoria's tiny body and brings her up to the cabin, which is a terrible mess. Just like every person and every inch of this ship. And Leo and Edgar, you uh, carry this man together who's ravaged. He is dead. There's not enough of him left to call dead and lay him in the room on the floor by Grimoria in bed. The captain you have not seen since before things really kicked off, Edgar sticks his head in. Is she gonna be all right? Hopefully. Um, unfortunately, he won't be. Shit. We're gonna have a lot of work for you in the morning. <laughs> Wonderful. And I'm knowing he is dead, I'm going to attend to Grimoria and make sure she gets through. The three of you set a little vigil around Grimoria. She is breathing. You inspect her. As the surgeon you are, open an eyelid, there is eye movement. And sliding us forward in time, after maybe a half hour of intense worry, she doesn't wake, but she stirs. And you're hopeful that uh, won't be her last encounter with danger. You're gonna have to wake up sometime, Grim. I think, I think that's where we'll leave it for now. With the clouds beginning to part ever so slightly and the storm a far away threat now that wall of rain traveling away. The assignment was done, is done. It was supposed to be easy, but the cost, as it often can be, was high. And with that, we'll see where Grimm and the rest lie after our break. Delve into a new tabletop role-playing game of investigative horror with the Candela Obscura core rulebook using the Illuminated World System by Darrington Press. Roam the turn-of-the-century inspired setting of the Fairlands, including the bustling city of New Fair and the ancient ruins of Old Fair below. Assemble a circle of investigators within the paranormal secret society of Candela Obscura. You'll analyze strange and horrifying events, fight back against dangerous phenomena, and contain the bleed that spreads from corruptive magic. Choose from 10 custom character sheets to empower your investigations and explorations. Use tactical intuition and brawn with the soldier specialty. Use your charm with finesse and flair as the magician specialty. Or study and practice mystical arts as an occultist. Explore districts of New Fair, competing organizations, four full assignments, and dozens of example assignments to inspire you. If you choose to brave the role of game master, this guide contains everything needed to pave the way for your Candela Obscura investigators. Offered in both a standard edition as well as an ornate limited edition for collectors, the Candela Obscura core rulebook contains 204 art-filled pages, including maps, 
items, immersive notes, mysteries, and plenty more to power your very own story. Keep this tome close, for the knowledge obtained may be the key to protecting you, your allies, and the Fairlands. Oh hey, it's us! Your friendly neighborhood ambiguous shadowy weirdos here to say cryptic things at you as usual. Are you ready for the third and final season of Midst? We certainly are. Some of you have been waiting a very long time. Good news, the wait is almost over. Midst, man, what the heck? A lot of questionable characters doing incredibly problematic things to each other in a series of increasingly insane escalating circumstances while struggling to follow their warped moral compasses and do what they think is hopefully the right thing. Can the trust get worse somehow? Can Phineas get less worse? How much longer can Lark outrun her past? Are there any objectively good guys in this story other than Marquis? How can any of these threads possibly be resolved with only one more season to go? And we still don't even know what happened with that dang moon. Are we ever going to get some answers? Yes. As a matter of fact, we will. The third and final season of Midst unfolds February 14th. Listen to the pure sound experience anywhere you stream podcasts or watch illustrated video episodes on the Critical Role YouTube channel. In the meantime, you can follow us at Midst Podcast or join the fold on Midst.co to get early access to episodes, behind the scenes bonus content, music downloads, digital artwork, and more. Everything's been leading to this. We'll be with you to the end. Do you trust us?
Another sunrise breaks over the glass sea. The wrathful elements have retreated from the heavens and the sky is now littered with slowly passing clouds. The sun sharing its rays through the breaks it finds in their cover. It's a beautiful sight to look on, though the air is still bitter cold. This far out at sea, a touch of the shiver that has overtaken the faraway lands known, uh, known as the shiver, but a cold snap, almost a mini ice age. It can actually be felt here out at sea with the more temperate climate of the Fairlands awaiting you at home. I would like to take a moment here as we resume to do a little bit of upkeep for your circle, which is a little bit off the cuff, uh, but despite last night's unexpected danger, you can still consider your assignment at a close. Mm -hmm. You have the artifact, you're heading home, so we're bending a bit here so that you can take care of yourselves. Uh, the sea is near smooth as the glass it is named for. All that is left for you guys is to travel back to the port of Hallow Harbor. Get to the fourth Pharos, Candela's home within the flare, and hand off. That's it. Since that's the case, I would like to ask how you guys would like to tend to yourselves in the time you have left on the Dandridge. So just talking in gameplay terms, we won't do a full, um, we won't do the full deal here using the illumination key, but if anyone wants to, at this sort of interim moment, take a stitch, a refresh, or a train, now is the time. The only cost for it is to tell me how that factors into the world we're in. And actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start with you, Grimoria. You awake in bed in the cabin that the four of you have been sharing on this cramped little boat. The fellows aren't here right now. The room is still akimbo, it's still a mess. It's sunny outside coming in through the glass of the windows, the portholes here. You've taken enough bleed in to earn yourself a scar, so a couple of things. One, in the freneticism of uh, the first part of our story today, I don't think we've got the full picture of you as a human being in this world, so I would love for you to tell us what she's wearing, how she appears, and then how she's changed. And that's it? <laughs> no, yeah. no backstory? Which is fine, we no, can save that for no another backstory. time. <laughs> no backstory. Um, well, she's wearing this. Okay. Um, but obviously it's kind of been waterlogged mm -hmm. and uh, she, her hair is not as nice as this. It's definitely, she's got naturally curly hair and it's definitely showing at this point. Um, and as far as how she's changed, I think with this scar, she's always had this sort of supernatural ability compared to maybe the average person person walking around New Fair. Um, and, but it's always been very linked to uh, artifacts or touch. Um, if she touches something that is imbued with a spirit or someone deceased mm -hmm. sort of living in it, she can intuit that. Um, I think now with this scar, something that, like you said, it w what did you call it? It was like a... Problem tunity. A problem tunity. I think that this isn't something she can control by any means, but it's almost like now a different part of her brain has been awakened, and it's auditory. And I think that she's hearing sounds and voices, uh, maybe from spirits she doesn't really know, but in times of stress, it only adds to um, the discomfort of her gift, which can also be a curse. So I think, I don't know how it's gonna manifest long-term, but I think when she wakes up, 
She doesn't realize there are no people in the room because she just <clears throat> hears many voices. You have had a sensitivity, a certain kind of sensitivity since you lost your parents at the end of the war. Um, and when your gift or curse, however you want to look at it, first manifested itself, you had a sensitivity to the other side. And now, as you prop yourself up on a, on a pillow in the cabin of this ship, you are just experiencing the first moments of a new sensitivity. And it is hard to get accustomed to. You wonder if it will always be this challenging to listen and hear, or if it's temporary, but it's undeniable. So that means you've taken your first scar in our game, and you have to do a little rearranging of your character sheet, so we will move a point from one of your actions to another. What is that change going to be? Uh, one of my actions to another, and it can be in any of the boxes, correct? Yeah. If there is one that you would love to be even better than ever, you can pull from one and slide in there, or if there's something that makes sense to you with the kind of scar you've taken. I think that I'm going to move, but if I move, if I move one that is like bolded, one of the circles, mm -hmm. does what I move it to also become a bold? No. No, so if you have a gilded uh, ability, you would remove a point in it, but that would stay gilded. Yeah. It would just be uh, harder to succeed uh, uh, without uh, gilded ability. Gotcha, okay, so I won't move a gilded. But I think <clears throat> that I'm going to use, I'm going to um, take from move, mm -hmm. and I'm going to uh, put it to hide. Okay. It's not very strategic, but I feel like if she can't. If it feels right, it's right. If, it, if her equilibrium is off because of the hearing whatever, then she might get better at just hiding. <laughs> I have a, let's do that. I have a pitch for you. Yeah, I'll take it. But it's a not pitch. my choice, it's your choice. Let me know. If you have, uh, speaking as someone who uh, has hyperacusis, which is an increased sensitivity to sound, huh. your sense might be more acute if you are hearing. Oh, great. More greatly. But that's just an idea that popped in my head. It doesn't mean it's the right idea. That's good. It's just uh, a thought I had. Okay, I'll do that. Then I'll move, move to sense. to sense. You're sensing more than ever. You're sensing too much. Yeah. Don't want to railroad you into anything. No, I, that's so smart. I it actually, was just an idea I That's had. a good worm. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so as you gather your thoughts and, and grapple with the new sensitivity you uh, have woken up with, let's now have everyone weigh in, including you. Does anyone want to take a stitch which would clear all marks for yourself? Wipe the slate clean. Uh, refresh means you would recoup all, all used drives and resistances, and then train means you're gonna take a little time to reflect or study something and be ready for the future, and you would have one D6 that you could use with any role oh. in your next assignment. So that's like only, a one-time bonus. And we can only pick one of those. One, you mm. can pick we two of those. Oh. Two of those things, but you have a very limited uh, allotment of them, and when they're gone, they're gone. They're gone, gone. And remember that I didn't wait to the end of this game to do it, so I'm burning through the, if you use them now, which I encourage, it's great, but you're burning through them sooner. And boy howdy am I gonna come at you, so. Do we um, get the drives back anyway, after like a long rest? No. Which we don't. No. So it's. The ways to, get your drives restored are to, with your limited amount of times, choose refresh in moments like this, uh -huh. or you can gain drives back using your gilded abilities, only in those gilded uh, actions. So yeah, it is diminishing returns. 
So you have to make your choice wisely. Is this the moment? Am I really close to taking another scar and dropping? Or do I just have like one in a couple? I'll probably be fine. I'll be fine. What's the worst Liam could do? But I do need you to make some decisions. You won't have them later. I'm not gonna do anything. So if she uses a refresh, it just works for her, but it doesn't work for all of us, right? Mm -hmm. It's just for her, like her just refreshes if her. If she picks a refresh, it is for her. Okay. So you guys are saying, is anyone gonna take one? All right, that's the last time that one is ever gonna be used. Please take it, Amy, or please take it. But, we'll ha but we have five of those. In each. Yeah. In each. In each. In each. So, we can use, yeah, so we can use each a stitch, a refresh, and train five times. You know, if right. you're close to taking a scar mm -hmm. in another one, it's maybe a good idea to take a stitch. If you're totally empty of drives, which is again, that's like, I gotta really buckle down and make this roll work. If you don't have any drives, you might wanna do that. The, the train for me is one that's sort of like a up in the air. Yeah. Okay, you are gonna. You said you're gonna take one? No. Oh, no you, I mean, they still, have, if you I don't use them, they never get used. They never yeah. get yeah. I'm gonna hold off. I'll hold off right now. I'll hold off right now. Do we have an opportunity to do this Mid game, or is it only when you give us the opportunity? I will tell you. It is at the end of an assignment, and usually that lines up with the end of a game, and we're mid game. So but I'm telling you that your assignment yeah. is done. You're going home. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's not. You, you have a, do you have anything sitting in the, yeah. Yeah, wait, wait. I have a choice to make. Maybe we can help, you can help me make it as a group. Mm -hmm. So I've got two, I have a, a new scar and I've got two brains, for two brain marks. Mm -hmm. um, but then I also have like, my drives are kind of, and resistance have been fucked. What about, what about, so with, when she gets a scar, doesn't that, doesn't that wipe her other? Not everything, other just, just that one, just, just that, that one. one <clears throat> okay. Only thing that wipes the slate clean for the level of marks you're at is ref is stitch. Dri drives drives come and go, in my opinion. Marks, on the other hand, if you're gonna if you're That's gonna right. clean right now, you guys also have the circle ability of uh, in this drive. together. So when you help each other on rolls, like I need help driving this car, I need help fighting this weirdo, and you fail, which you're gonna a lot, you'll get drives. That will generate drives. Mm -hmm. Nothing is going to take away the marks. There's very few things. Sometimes there's an ability that some people have. I don't think anybody has I stuff didn't like take that. Any no, no. I, I think if that's okay <laughs> with everyone, I will take a refresh. Yeah. Mm. That's fine with me. Totally fair. Or a stitch. You want? Are you trying to get rid of? Bring your drives back? Or no, wipe sorry. Away? I want to wipe so my. You want marks. a stitch? I want a stitch. Yeah. Sorry about that. You want a stitch? Oh. So. So right now all I have is a scar, but no other marks. So there is. Uh, on our table yes. is that, so wipe away one stitch. Yep. Anybody else, anything? No, I think I'm fine. I'm gonna yeah, press I have, this. I have two brain marks right now. So would not be insane to take one, but you could be fine one way or the other. I've got uh, one body, one bleed, and two brain. You Wait. mad lad. That's that's a little crazy. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I would take a refresh. I mean, I would take a stitch. He's <sighs> intent on killing us, what are you doing? I'll take a stitch. Okay. Oh, yeah, I did it. I'll hold, I'll hold. I've got I one in each it just right now. now yeah, and my nerve is shot, resources. but I, I'm just going to. Uh, so that is two you all are this stitches is of five gone, and you two, your slate is wiped clean, yeah. and you guys are holding fast. Yeah, I love it. I may have two brain. I get a brain. I get like what? I, I already. <laughs> like Sam's flask. <laughs> um, I'm hydrated. Edgar. Uh huh. A few hours into the morning, Grimoria has not yet woken at this point. Um, you are out on the deck of the ship, just ruminating on everything that happened, and um, the cook, uh, Gabby, um, comes up to you. Gabby, wasn't it? Gabby, and Gabby is the woman who was thrown across the cabin. Morning. Morning. Um, sorry, I just wanted to thank you for last night. Oh, mm -hmm. you're welcome. You haven't, you haven't eaten anything yet, I don't think. You should come by the kitchen. Thank you, I, 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 I will. Okay. Um, sorry, it's just the boats. Everyone's a bit shaken. Losing Heath last night. Yeah, understandably. 
Keith is the gentleman who lost thirty yeah. percent of his body mass. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes, that was um very sad. Do you think you could come um, look in on on Sunny? Yes, absolutely. And where, if you would show me where they are. Sure, I'll take you to crew quarters. Thank okay. you. She uh, leads you back towards the rear of the ship, where you've, you've been, but not spent a lot of time back there. Um, the four of you have been forced to share a pretty cramped cabin near the front of this small, again, steamship. But in the back is crew quarters, and um, there are people milling about, walking in and out, but in the the rear of this room, once you walk inside the deck house, uh, you see Sonny, and he is, again, the gentleman whose leg got wrecked, and he is sort of on his side, kind of shallow breathing, um, and sees you and weakly pushes himself up. No, don't, don't, you don't need to get up. <laughs> I guess you tried to save my life, but... So far, it seems to have worked. Yeah, I don't think the fates wanted to make it easy. <laughs> no, they did not. How does it look? Do I smell anything? Um, uh, un- I, I understand right you're, you're wondering if you smell anything. Um, oh, make a focus roll. Six. Six. Perfect. You That's don't, uh, yes, a success, uh, a success. You, you don't smell the thing you're fearful you will. You don't smell any um, festering. Um, and on closer inspection, uh, the, the wound is burnt from your, your quick work last night, but um, it is raw and uh, it is oozing a, a little mm-hmm. bit. Uh, it could be cleaned and, yeah. and, and I'll, rebound. I'll take the time to mm-hmm. do that. Um, could you bring me, do you have any, no, I wouldn't, do I, have any, I wouldn't have any on me. The cleanest alcohol you have. Oh. Clearest. Like, like whiskey? If you have anything less dark. Gin. Yes, gin would be great. Your friend has gin. That's right, he does, doesn't she? She scuttles off um, and is gone for a moment and uh, leaves you with uh, Sonny and there are a couple other crew members, a uh, man and a woman in the room kind of hanging by the door and they're quietly watching. I'm gonna have to clean this out. It's probably going to hurt. Okay. But no. less than it did the other night. I was gonna say, I don't think anything's gonna compare to last night. No. Uh, but it's Worst not, fucking night of my life. It's understandably so. It was bad for a lot of people. What are you even doing on this tub talk? An unfortunate choice in transportation. <laughs> Everything in here is covered in rust. Not exactly the best place for a surgeon. No, <laughs> but I'm making the best of it. Gabby returns with a, a ball Thank of hooch that she filched. By the way, um, your friend seems to be up. Oh. The young woman. That's good. Okay. Well, I, also, I took a nip of this. I hope that's okay. I don't care. It's not mine. Okay. Um, and I proceed to clean the wound as best I can, rebind it, right. and then I will rush back to okay. see Grimora. Yeah, you spend, I'm not going to make you roll anything. This is, you went to medical school for this. You work at the Grand Halen Hospital. You are a top tier surgeon. You clean the wound, you pour gin on it. He does scream. I won't role play that. <laughs> and you bind it, uh, bind it tightly. And for the first time with this patient, you feel like he is not teetering on the edge. That's good. Um, Unfortunately, this is going to leave a scar. Uh, at least I get some time off. Yes, I would, I would hope so. Thanks, Doc. You're welcome. Don't come on our boat again, okay? Uh, uh, you couldn't pay me. <laughs> I wish they paid me better. Uh, Grimoria, um, Edgar pops his head in at the front door, and um, you're not alone for the first moment this morning. Hey. You're awake, good. Yes, thank you. You're welcome, that's what I do, but you took quite a lot last night. Well, seeing as how it's my first time on a boat, um, and hopefully my last time, uh, yeah. I'm, I guess, just happy to be alive. Uh, we all are happy or alive. I, um, 
How does your face feel? I'm gonna walk towards her to inspect. Um, it feels hot. It, yeah, right. it's it, it all bruised, I assume. It is a dark flower on her upper forehead and cheek, around one eye. But I do feel this odd ringing. It's not a ringing, um, mm. it's like a hearing voices. Okay. I don't know if that's a medical thing. Um, it could be. Um, it's not really my area of expertise, but considering, well, it is either f you hit your head very hard. I definitely did that. So that could be the cause of it, which would be unfortunate. Yeah. But could be something to do with the um, exposure we had. We all had last night, and you had quite a bit of it. What happened to the box? It, you managed to close it again. Is it secure? Yes. As far as I know. Grimoria, as Edgar is talking to you, you are hearing his voice and you are hearing ghosts of his voice almost stuttered out or delayed occasionally just before he speaks. Mm. And every once in a while you hear a voice that is not his. Can I make out what that voice is saying? It's whispers, it's syllables. Some, sometimes you think you're imagining it, and then at other moments, there's no denying it. Sorry, can you repeat what you just said? That's fine, we, the, you managed to close the box and seal it, and it's secure as far as I know for now. Okay, well how much longer do you think we have left before we get back? Shouldn't be that much longer. We, um, I don't know for sure, I'm not that acquainted with sea travel. Yeah. Um, but it shouldn't be too much longer. I have to get back to work. Yeah, I understand. I have to get back to the hospital. Okay, well. Um, well, you should, you should definitely rest. I'll let everybody else know you're up, but I'm glad you're awake. Thank you. <laughs> um. Just as you're reaching this moment in the conversation, uh, Gabby actually pops her head in again. Hello, Gabby. Hi. Um, Captain's looking for you guys. Okay. Do All you us? know? Yeah. Do you know where the rest are? Not off the top of my head. Um, okay. Well, uh, just come up to the. Uh, go. Sorry, not up. Go back to the radio. Um, okay. Over past the kitchen. When you find him. Come on. Let's go. I'll help you. Okay. May I hold your hand? <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Thank you. And uh, Edgar, just because my memory is so spotty mm -hmm. and it was so hectic last night, can you give me one more visual description of our good doctor? Yes. Um, he's, uh, it would be difficult to pick him out in a crowd. He's not exceptional looking in any way. He very much blends into the background. He is a relatively, he's tall, but not overly so. And he is wearing clothes that are, would be considered current and fashionable, but it seems as though he didn't pick them out for himself. He, someone told him to get these. He has no, he's not wearing them well. Um, he has small round glasses that he, uses for reading and other things, and he um, has a very, um, it doesn't look like he slept or sleeps well. And he wears uh, most of the, almost always, very full coverage clothing. He doesn't wear a lot, anything that really always collars with ties and long sleeves and things of that nature, he likes to be covered. Um, and is always neat. Well, Grimoria, you take the hand of this tall, but not too tall, very neat doctor, and head out onto the deck. Where do you think you two gentlemen are this morning? I have probably been. Uh, do I have anything resembling a private private room? 
No. You wish. Sweet. I assume. You wish. You are climbing the walls on this ship, even before the storm. I would have found a place to sit. Is there, there's a, there's a bar of some kind, I assume, or some sort of, where's the kitchen? The, the disappointment that oh, you're I'm so feeling sorry, thinking of a larger. would be the disappointment on day one, which is, yes, this is, this is uh, oh, I know exactly. Where this I am. is a tramp steamer. Okay. Off the books, so that Kenda. This is a ship. The Dandridge is a ship that Candela has commissioned from time to time. It's your first time on it, to do things that they do not want. Recorded. I am sitting as close to the radio room and as close to the activities of the ship, whatever mm -hmm. people are doing, whatever work they're doing, and I'm okay. sitting as gracefully as I can under the circumstances, uh, working and writing in a journal. Okay. Just listening to the sound of people going by, waiting for news. Excellent. And you do hear some sort of radio chatter mm -hmm. for a moment, um, but the door is shut um, and, and it only lasts for a moment. Um, you see uh, uh, a sort of a younger squirrely guy who you think somebody referred to as Doug at one point a few days ago uh, run out for a minute and then he pops back in, shuts the door tightly behind. What about yourself, Malcolm? Um, I have uh, what well, the closest thing that resembles a cup of coffee in my hand. Oh, they got that here. Uh, I have that, and I'm just overlooking uh, on the bow of the ship, just overlooking into the ocean. Mm -hmm. Kind of thinking about last night, taking it in. Uh, the arm is still sore, still kind of banged up. Um, and uh, Leo. And then to you, Malcolm, but give me the full picture. Paint Leo for me. Leo is sitting in whatever his second pair of clothes were. It's still very nice. I will say the robe is the same robe from last night. It is drenched, is slightly burnt at the edges, but still the most comfortable thing possible in this weather. It is a very nice, small, uh, leather-bound journal. Um, it's got wonderful texture on the front. It's almost, it's got a paisley like burned into it, like uh, with a little gold leaf. And just, just a man attempting to be comfortable sitting on the ground, uh, listening to people wander by and trying to put uh, as much of what happened down on paper as possible. And the sound of that busy work is a comfort to you, I know. Very much. Uh, and Malcolm, cut a figure for me. Uh, well, even though I have a vest on right now, I am down to my undershirt uh, last night, um, which is folded up in the corner as neat as it can be because uh, years of military service has uh, strengthened uh, traditional, you know, orderly, orderly uh, morning routines, which would either be making my bed. Um, grooming myself or, you know, or, or, or putting myself together for the day. So I'm kind of, I'm right now in a, in a, an undershirt. I have my slacks on still. Um, I'm, uh, should I go over like how old I am now? Sure. I'm uh, 32 years old. Uh, so I'm not recovering as fast as I used to when I was in my early twenties, but it's fine. Um, I, uh, I'm used to this kind of action where I put where life is lives are put on the line since I did military service. So I am basically trying to reorganize myself to try to not let that is a ways that you compartmentalize things when you see tragic events happen or things that might scare you and I and I'm kind of have a way of compartmentalizing that or moving on from it or digesting it and going on to the next thing. So that's what I'm doing right now. Um, I have I'm not. I'm still dirty from the night before. Uh, my skin has like you know when when salt dries on it, Oof. and you have those little patches of salt on your skin. Lord. It still hasn't like you know washed off because I you know saved these two, these two gentlemen. Um, so I, I'm I'm kind of in need of a, of a bath, but my face is washed because you know that's what I was able to do at the time. Yeah. And um, and uh, and I'm just uh, and I'm still like kind of like disheveled a little bit, but I'm still very stoic, very calm, mm. and prepared for what may come next. Compartmentalization, something you learned very, very fast during the war for survival. Yes, sir. So you two coming out of the cabin do a quick loop, and uh, near the uh, rear of the ship you spot Leo, 
squatting on the floor, writing in his journal, and not too far off, paying Leo no mind as Malcolm contemplating the sea. What are you writing? Oh, look at you. Oh, I'm gonna get up properly. Oh, little method actress is awake. <laughs> Thank you for your help. Oh, this is literally the least I could do. It was the least I could do. I wish I could have done more. Uh, that was quite a bit. I'm uh, writing down what I can recollect. Hmm. It's important to write these things down. It's going to change in your mind and change and change. That's smart. I can get you one of these if you like. I highly recommend it. Oh, sure. Yeah, it's nothing better than looking back and seeing what an idiot you were. Uh, can you repeat that last part again? Oh, it's nothing like looking back and seeing what an idiot you were. Oh. <laughs> Are you all right? Did we get some water in the I think I might it? have. Oh, we'll have to have that looked at. Yeah. Oh. Some side effects. We'll get them worked out when we get back to the center. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Malcolm, <clears throat> are you feeling oh. all right? I'm just relieved that you're okay. Uh, I want to give her a big hug if I can. How are you feeling? Gentle. Um, I'm feeling good. I'm worried about getting back home. Yeah. Um, I have somewhere to be, but... That's okay. We'll get there when we get there. Mm. I have a good excuse. <laughs> <laughs> Up the side of the ship, the door next to you pops open, and a little sort of squirrely young man, Doug, looks around. Oh, you're right there. Jeez. Come on. You got a call on the radio. Oh, oh. And he pops back in. <clears throat> we'll follow into a pretty small cramped little room with uh, Doug sits at a chair and the captain is here too, Captain Devere. Um, captain? Okay. Oh. Glad to see that you're up and about. We were a little worried last night. Yes, well, I appreciate your concern. I'm sorry about your crew members. I haven't seen a storm like that in 15 years. It's good to know that doesn't happen often. You've been in a storm like this before. I am in younger days, yeah. Oh, my God, I wasn't lying. No, apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> feel better. <clears throat> Doug, how are we doing? Yeah, I'm trying to reestablish connection. Sorry, hold on a second. He's fiddling with a mass of, of uh, dials and uh, trying to hook in. Uh, hold on one second. I'm going to try to reestablish connection. Uh, Yeah, ma'am, are you there? Hello? Yeah, hello, do you read me? Edgar Grimoria? Are you there? Are yeah. You? Yes. Oh, everybody's here, ma'am. Oh, thank goodness. Despite the spotty connection, you cannot mistake the deliberate voice of your lightkeeper, Zora Manning. All of you are naturally intimately familiar with Zora, meeting with her regularly at Leo's flat on Tivery Lane in the Red Lamp, your chapter house. Uh, Zora, for all of us, is a tall, gaunt woman in her 60s with an owlish shock of short, dark hair with strains of white running through it. Usually very serious, but not without a bit of sentimental fondness for your circle. It's comforting to hear her voice, even through the tubes of a radio. I, I understand you were in a bit of a predicament last night. I'm sure that's an understatement. Uh, how are you all holding up? Mm. We've seen better days, but we're alive. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad nobody's the worse for wear. Um, Grimoria, I understand uh, it was looking a bit dodgy for you last night. Uh, yes, um, I would say I got my sea legs, or... <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know the term. <laughs> Sound all right now, though? Yes. Well, I look forward to a proper play-by-play -play in Leo's sitting room when you're back. I'll rest a hell of a lot easier once all my chicks are back in the nest. I have an excellent vintage, Mr. Amicus, one that I think can compete with your collection. I'm hoping we can put it to the test. Oh, yes. Mm. That would be lovely. There's everything I could use right now. <sighs> Just, I'm so relieved. We couldn't reach you last night. 
I'm just so relieved. We're safe now. And we can't wait to see you when we get back to shore. Right. Uh, um, listen, there, there is one thing uh, I needed to talk to you all about. I'm sure the last thing you want right now is me sending you on another errand, but I am hoping to ask you all for a favor. Or, well, maybe it won't seem like a chore at all, I don't know. It's been a while since you've seen him, I believe. Oh, oh. No, wait. No. I'm a little concerned about Declan Murphy. Um, what happened? I thought he was reassigned. Declan Murphy. Declan Murphy. Not that you have anything but the utmost trust and reliance on your fellow Circle members. But hearing that name out here, after the night you had, you find yourself Really wishing Declan were here. You all came to Candela in your own roundabout ways, some directly scouted by Declan. A couple of you met him upon arrival. But all four of you mentored under him to a degree when there used to be five members of the Circle of the Crimson Mirror. Zora is your lightkeeper. Zora gives you your marching orders, but it was Declan who guided you when you first began your strange and hidden second life. He used to be a history teacher. History was his vocation. When he joined Candela a few decades back, history became his purpose. A born leader, charming, affable, knew everyone, could talk to anyone, and in the early days, when you were a little less sure of this new life you'd embarked on, he was the glue that held you together. Eventually, he was reassigned to another circle to do for them what he'd done for you, as Zora tells it. So hearing him brought up in this particular moment makes his absence feel very pronounced. You see, he left town a few weeks ago and has dropped all communication, which isn't like him, yeah. you know. Yeah. You know, Declan. Uh, I'm sure it's nothing. I know exactly where he is. He's told me. Or left a note, anyway. Through the usual methods. He's... Well, he's been in the weeds for several months, you see, and recently dropped me a note and... Letting me know he's gone home for a couple of days. His, his childhood home. To the Isle of Serenity. You're about a day's journey from there now. I... I'm maybe being... a nervous Nelly, I suppose, but... I just want to know he's all right. I'm sure he is, but as all of you know, after the night you had... The work can get to you. It, it, it's about a day from where you are. It is on the way home to Hello Harbor. Would you mind terribly much looking in on him? Of course. You, you didn't even have to ask. I'm quite glad you did ask. And now I think it would be it's the perfect time to see him. Rather remarkable. Anything for Declan? Objections, Doctor? No, as long as the ship's willing to take us there. Uh, yes, sir. Doc, uh, I talked briefly with Miss Manning, and uh, certainly doesn't add any fuel costs, and we'll be there in a day. It's on the way. Great. I may need to use your radio to um, notify my employers. Uh, well, you took the week, didn't you, darling? Has it been? It, it's been about four days that you've been at sea. So this was, it's a good thing to bring up. 
you do live a double life. You all live double lives. And you work for the Fogs, dealers, curators of the fabulous and strange. Um, but you have had to slip away, and it took asking for a bit of vacation time for this longer trip. But Great. You secured it. Great. But you only have a couple of days, so you do have to get home relatively soon. Well, is, is there anything I can do for you at home before you arrive? Are you sure you're all right? Oh, we're fine. We just want to make sure Declan's okay. It was a stressful night, but we all got through it somewhat in one piece. Like we always do. Hmm. It sounds like it was a little hairier than normal, Malcolm, but I'm glad to hear. I'm glad to hear. All right, well, I'm sorry, Captain, I don't want to take up any more of your time. Um, if you need me, I'm here, I can be reached. Uh, and once you see him, drop me a line, let me know. Just let me know that he's okay. Miss Manning, is there anything that we should we should be aware of before we, we, before we uh, pick him up? Is there anything that you're concerned about that's on your mind that we should pay special attention to? No, I'm sure I'm just jumping at shadows, but he's been on a prolonged mission with his current circle, and sometimes I worry that it's getting to him. But that's why I retired from the field. It gets to you, I understand. I don't suppose you have access to those files, and I don't suppose you can give us access to those files. It is the sort of thing that I'm aware is difficult. I'm afraid it's on a need-to-know basis. Mm. Apologies. Yes, yes, yes. Anyway, it's where he grew up. I hear it's charming, Serenity, so... It may very well be a lovely stop. It would be quite the name if it wasn't charming. Mm. Well, well, I'm just blathering. I have a cocker spaniel to feed, and... Um, I look forward to your return. The vintage, Mr. Amicus, the vintage. I, I do hope you like it. Maybe save me some of that vintage. Always. Always. Oh, it's a crate, darling. <laughs> I'll see you in a few days. Right. Hear from you sooner. Yes, Miss Manning. One glass, please. Yes. I find the tiniest bit of privacy before we have this conversation. Um, Captain. Yeah. The man that passed last night. Um, yes, that was uh, Heath. Heath. Hmm. May I take a look at him? Of course. Uh, he is, we've put him in cargo. Thank you. He leads you out on deck. And uh, you, in less than a minute, you are. It doesn't have to be now. It can just be after we've had this talk. But okay. I want to eventually take a look at him. All right. All right. You know where to find me? Thank you. Are you finding uh, maybe off to your cabin to have uh, a chat? Yeah, or at least outside of it where we can see in any direction. Okay. So, do we feel safe leaving the artifact here unattended when we disembark? Well, if everything goes well, we shouldn't be there that long. It may just be a stop off to say hello and then get back on board and at home, but. I, I will dip in to say I understand that reservation, but um, Manning's or Manning, this was her arrangement. And she seems to put her faith in, in this crew and has used them multiple times. Okay. Well, if the, we do as much as I assume they're trusted worthy, if we see anything that leads us to doubt, there is always, we can always take it off. It'll take some effort, but we could remove it from the ship if possible. I find it interesting that we go through an experience like this, and the first thing that happens is we're sent to see Declan, which is exactly what I would do if I wanted to smooth everything over with a group like ours. Mm. It makes me suspicious. Not terribly, but a bit suspicious. Well, I mean, it's not like I don't know. I mean, it was just a storm. They happen. 
we got into a particularly bad one. Well, there are storms and there are storms. And sometimes when you're carrying something that has a gravity mm -hmm. of its own, things get pulled towards you. And also, just because a place is called Serenity means nothing. All it means is either it is Serenity or it's exactly the opposite and they were hoping people wouldn't notice. <sighs> what are you alluding to? Mm. Seems a little jump into conclusions. Caution. I don't trust anything right now. And We all I'm had a very bad night. Very bad. And that's going to make us jumpy, but that doesn't mean that the storm was part of a larger conspiracy. No, just... And if anything we can trust, it's Miss Manning, and it's definitely Declan. Now, if someone maybe are, might be manipulating Declan, or he might be wrapped up in something, I think it's our duty to investigate and to assess the situation and to uh, act accordingly. I mean, it is yes. also possible that he just is out of contact for a perfectly legitimate reason. I mean, he could be That's undercover. We don't know what the mission is. To take a break. <laughs> well, if it breaks the tie, I would like to feel dry land under my feet. Yes. Fair. I wouldn't want a nice bath. Well, we are clearly going anyway. He has family, and we take care of family, even if we haven't seen them in quite a while. It is not. I'm not saying I don't want to see him. It is a little bit of a coincidence that we happen to be so close on the way home. I understand that, but it is. It will be nice to see him regardless of the situation. Mm, this is true. But we should all try and relax, and as your physician, you should rest. Because last night was a lot. Would now be a good time to go look in on yes. the corpse. Yeah. Okay. I grab my medical bag and head down. Okay. Mm. So, in less than a minute, you are there. You traipse down the same set of stairs that lead to the now secured remains of Atia Griffia. And in a, a separate corner on its own, laid out on a blanket, are the remains of a new corpse. It is like a portion of one side of this man's body evaporated away and left. It's not like a bisection or a clean cut leaving that display, but it is hills and valleys of melted over and unfinished anatomy. I'm making notes as I examine the body. In journal, um, are the edges rough or are they smooth? Like if I get inspect very closely the edges of the skin or they disappear, uh, the evaporated flesh, are they charred, are they rough, are they smooth? Are they... It is not charred, there is no burn here. Um, it is relatively smooth with, and if you run a single finger down it, it has a bit of a, texture or a modeling, mm. mottling, not modeling, um, but definitely to the eye looks smooth. It doesn't look mm. scorched, burned. I'm drawing d diagrams and making notes and just trying to record everything that happened, getting, examining the specific way he died. Is there the effect that I witnessed last night with the, the black, and the stuff drifting off, and that is stopped. It is still now. It has been halted. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take... And I will add that in the event that happened last night, his body lay the closest to the remains mm -hmm. in the final moments. Uh, I'll take a little bit, a little uh, vial out of my medical kit and scrape or cut off some flesh mm -hmm. to keep and put it in the vial and put it away just to have a sample. Okay. All right, keep track of that. It's unfortunate. Yeah. Sorry this happened to you. Um, 
While uh, he's doing that, I think Grimoria takes his advice and um, tries to rest, but I'm curious as a player, I took on Let Them In, which, can I read it? Yes. It yeah. says, whenever you take one or more bleed marks, which I have four, you also gain additional information about the phenomenon that harmed you. Ask the GM one question about the source of the bleed. Okay. Um, you can ask me a few. Yeah, okay, great. So I think while she's in this like kind of restful, fitful state. Mm -hmm. um, reflecting. Reflecting. I wonder, I don't remember where they all came from, but um, can you tell me anything about what makes this particular ar artifact so powerful? I guess that's my first question. Well, you have all familiarized yourselves with who this woman was in history, which was, uh, she was listed in, in general history as a, a high seat in the government of the time of the ruling class. But in texts that are harder to find and have come into Candela's collection over the centuries, and what you've learned, you understand, you believe, you know, that Atia Griffia was a highly powerful alchemist in her time and served at the right hand of Emperor Calanus. There's a market in New Fair called the Calanus Market. It's named after this man. He was the last person to rule before, I guess, Candela believes the people of that time flew too close to the sun. Mm -hmm and it all came apart, and whatever it is that caused the vast chasm to erupt, whatever caused uh, the end of the city of Old Fair, some believe can be traced back to Calanus. And this woman was in his daily life. Okay. Uh, and very powerful. Um, she disappears, I'm gonna call this a couple questions, she disappears from those history books for a while. Um, there seemed to have been um, some sort of split between Calanus and Atia. Mm. And there are some records that believe that she fled Old Fair uh, for parts unknown. And I'm going to reserve one question, but for maybe for later, mm -hmm. to see what I can come up with, but I guess something that I'm curious it's about. It's gotta be connected all at once. to the thing that caused. No, for sure, but maybe something oh, okay. later will come up in the story. Okay, I like it. I but, like I, it. but I do have one question. Yeah. Uh, considering my abilities to connect with deceased spirits, mm -hmm. and also this that I have let them in, is there something that this person would want us to know, a message? There is no answer to that question. And the rules text for this feature is, ask the GM one question about the source of the bleed, or am I thinking of a past one? Well, I got four bleeds. Take a bleed mark, but if there is no answer to be given to return the bleed, I might be remembering a past version of this. Oh, I don't know. That's not on mine, but cool if it is. Mm. I'll tell you what, I'll factor that into how hard I go on you with bleed in the future, okay. and there is no answer. Damn, we had to ask. Um, out on the deck, uh, Malcolm, kind of returned to your spot, staring out at the sea, thinking about the conversation you just had, and uh, a woman named Joan comes up to you. Um, hey. How do you do? Um, I'm good. Uh, I just wanted to thank you for last night. Um, you saved my friend, Burke. Oh, well, you're very welcome. How's he doing? Okay. He's a little embarrassed, shaken up, but he's okay. Yeah. You tell him he's brave, young Alan. 
It's, uh, it's a pretty brave soul you got there as a friend. I think so. It's a little more than a friend, but. That's your said your husband, right? I said friend. Oh. More than a friend. More than a friend. Well, I'm really glad that I saved him then. Me too. Did you serve? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, you could say I did. Yes, yes, I did serve. I was in the, uh, I was in the war. <laughs> but uh, it was um, uh, kind of traumatic, to say the least. It's kind of the whole bag, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Definitely. I thought so. I, I did too. You did? Yeah. Where did you serve? Well, I was, uh, I was in West Eckland, uh, oh. close to the city. So you saw a lot of action then? In the early days, yeah, but I took a bullet and they pulled me out and, uh, I was out about a half a year before the worst of it. Wow. Still saw my share of shit. Of course you did. It was all for the good cause, right? So we tell ourselves. <laughs> yeah, there's some truth in it, but it's complicated, right? It always is. Well, anyway, genuinely, thank you. Oh. Well, thank you for, uh, thank you for thanking me. I mm -hmm. appreciate it. I'm gonna let him know how glad I am he's alive. Have a good night. Tell him there's some extra strong coffee down there for him if he wants to take a sip. <laughs> if, he, if he feels so inclined. I read you. Um, if, oh, oh, if it's all right. Yeah. I, I would love to be sitting, writing, just far enough away to hear some of this conversation. Mm -hmm. And once uh, they walk away. Malcolm, do you have a moment? Uh-oh. Yes. I can already feel what's coming. Congratulations on saving that uh, lovely stranger and saving the heart of that other lovely stranger. Mm. Mm. But? Oh no, buts. I, uh, I'm not enough of a fool to argue with a gambler on a winning streak. <laughs> I just, I want you to know, I don't pretend I would understand what it was to be raised by your parents and your family. Mm. Clearly it was difficult. But family, mm, family is a very precious commodity. Mm. Some people have very little of it and it is worth quite a bit. Mm. Some people have so little that it's worth that box of bones at the bottom of the ship. <sighs> Putting a stranger ahead of family, risking your family for a stranger, that's, well, that sounds more like your brother to me, doesn't it? And if you're going to emulate your brother, I would prefer if you found a better trait to emulate do you understand me? Yes, I understand. I doubt that. Well, you need to understand something too. Mm. The reason why we do what we do is not just for our own gain, it's for the protection of those that we are supposed to be serving within the shadows. And that's everybody, that's anyone, that's from the ship hands to the captain to with president. And what I did was well, I've been asked to do ever since I started joining Candela, so. I sincerely disagree with that reading of it. Well, you know that I can't watch an innocent life just fade without being able to do something, but I understand what you're saying, and I apologize for worrying you. You know enough to know that I don't have a lot of family. She's family, and as lovely as that conversation was, and believe me, I understand how lovely it was, if you had not been there, the conversation that you would have directly after that one would have been so much more unpleasant. I know. I don't think you do. I have a hunch. 
Well, I hope you don't ever have to learn. Get your head together. I can see too much of your family in you, and it's disappointing. You're better than that. I swear it. And I'm going to close my book, having just written down the advice that you gave me, <laughs> and walk to my cabin. Um, I would like to come out on deck after examining the body. Mm -hmm. And see them walking away from each other. Malcolm. Oh, sorry. Malcolm. Oh, yes. <laughs> you want a little go at me too this morning? Uh, no, I don't care. I want to take a look at your hand. <laughs> no, I don't care. Um, can I see your hand, please? Of course. It hasn't been exposed to that much water before. And I just want to take a look at the connecting tissue. Oh, thanks, Doc. I just want to take a quick over, look over it, see if it's working. Sure. I don't know anything about the actual mechanics, but just where it's connected to his actual physical right, body. Right, right. In case any damage has been done or it looks inflamed. And remind me, Malcolm, it is so there for the world to see or it is gloved? It's, uh, it's, it's, it's the, it's basically, it's a, it's a gauntlet, gauntlet-esque kind of contraption um, where it's like a kind of synthetic rubber mixed in with metal. Okay. And, uh, and uh, below here is sort of like a clasp, <laughs> like, a, like it kind of connects my flesh to, that's fused, is fused to this glo to this, to this, uh, to this pros prosthetic hand. And, uh, but I can remove it in order to like ma do maintenance within it. Uh, and that's, it's painful when it happens. Okay. I don't need you to remove it, I just want to look at the connection. Of course. But I've been used to the pain. It's not, it's not, it's not like, you know, I've, I've had it checked over many times, so it's not something that I can't endure, not, or can't not endure. Just, does the skin look inflamed, or is there any bleeding or anything? You, t you take a minute to gently turn the hand over, and you've examined this hand before. You guys got to know each other in a hospital. Um, there, there isn't, this hand was a gift of sorts from Malcolm's family. Uh, sort of a parting gift when he uh, became less welcome at the house, the mansion, and the eaves. But it was top of the line because the Trills family is, uh, an old one. We have very large coffers. But it seems all right. All right. You can put it away. Thanks seems fine. Yep, yeah, so it looks, feels good. It's a little stiff from the, uh, what I assume would be the seawater, but uh, I think it's well, still, still do the duty. Good. Um, Leo. Oh. I will eventually go looking for that one, but go ahead. Sorry. Well, I'll wait. No, no, no. No, no. No, no, I'll wait. Just talk to each other. Uh, <laughs> where, where would you be? Would you be at the room? I think I'd be in, in a room, I guess maybe what we, the room we share, mm -hmm. and trying to like, trying to sleep, but kind of not being able to, and maybe writing down uh, in, in my little, I mean, it's, a, it's an occult text, but just writing, it's making a note, it's mine, but making a note about what you said about the, um, about Atia mm -hmm. and, and her sort of history, mm -hmm. making some notes under it. Oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't know that you were actually working. Oh, uh, no, I just, I just keep having these thoughts, you know, about yesterday and how are you doing? Oh, the usual, I suppose. We're worried about you. Are you writing about uh, whatever the person was that? Well, I didn't get much information, but. <laughs> it's not about that. About her, but I did, she was very powerful and um, mm -hmm. who she worked for, Ken, Calanus, mm -hmm. Kenula, uh, <laughs> Canalus, uh, was a very powerful. Mm. Well, we know, there's a street named after him. Um, that's really all I know, but it's nice to sort of put details in where there are none. Anything you saw 
uh, what sort of person they were. Honestly, I was just a... Mm. When you talk, it comforts me, that's all. I was just hoping to hear a little bit about what, you, what it was like. Oh, well, I can just, I guess, just tell you about the whole thing. You had a, there was a, there was a, I saw you doing a thing with your hand. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm still getting used to that, but sometimes when I, I guess, channel someone, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm in their body and I'm wearing their clothes. And sometimes I try to use maybe what they have and, and then I realize, oh wait, I can't. <laughs> um, it takes some getting used to. Mm -hmm. But you really came in and were a hero. Thank you. No, I was middle management at best. It's not a lot I can do in these sorts of situations other than worry, but. That's enough for me. Yeah, just uh, I don't know who else I would talk to on this boat right now without getting angry, so. Huh. I just needed to clear my head a bit. You know how I get. Well, do you want me to read from my book again? I just to keep you company? You do need to sleep, but a, a moment would be lovely. I can't sleep. She just starts from page one. Starts <laughs> <laughs> reading. I'm going to occasionally fix grammar. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, I know that, yeah, so this is for a little bit. Do you think I would take you guys to bed and then close us out? And the moon is out, and it is the exact opposite of the night before. It is clear and hauntingly beautiful on the ocean. And you have a night of rest ahead of you and part of the day left before you'll reach your errand. Um, the next morning, uneventful, everyone gets up and putters around the ship and begins to get ready for their next stop. But uh, the one thing that I will throw in, uh, Leo, mm -hmm. while you're out on the deck on your own, it's pretty early. Mm -hmm staring out, looking for any sign of an island that you'll be arriving at. Uh, about three or four hours out, though. Mm. And um, the other man who ended up in the drink that night, the other night, um, sort of sidles up next to you on the ship. Oh, hello. Hey. Mm. Man. Completely different than the other night, huh? It was almost like an apology. <laughs> <laughs> I like the quiet, don't you? Never quite got used to it, actually. I, uh, I don't like my thoughts. I try and drown them out a bit. Well, you don't like the quiet? Mm, not too much. Mm. You? I like it when I like it. Hmm. probably means you like yourself, since it's the moment that you're just with your own company. I saw you writing in that book yesterday. Would mm. you write in that book? Oh. Just, and I definitely pick a page that does not have anything too scandalous. Uh, just a bit about what happened. I like to remember things. And I can barely remember names, so this helps. That's cool, I don't know any writers. I don't either. Believe me, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't want it quiet, huh? No. How long, I mean, if you must, if you, how long have you sailed on this ship? Uh, like three years at least. You don't look it, you look great. Huh. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> if you don't like quiet, you want to go make some noise? <sighs> Yes, desperately. <laughs> Here we got three or four hours before we land. Come mm. with me. That's a shame. I had easily six hours of ideas. <laughs> six hours of ideas. Leads you off <laughs> and to the rear oh, of the ship. Is booty on the ship? I don't get booty on the ship. Thank, no. thank God, Grimori, I can't I barely hear. You have to work on your flexibility. <laughs> God damn. Booty on the ship. Jesus. Sorry. Hello. <laughs> I was hoping. Eventually. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Eventually. Rated S for smut. One can hope. <laughs> Off in the distance, um, you finally see an island 
rise on the horizon, and it takes an hour or so to get closer. But eventually you start to make out detail. Um, let me see. And what you see is beautiful. Uh, you see a, it's a fairly small island, but the coastline uh, to this place is rough, but breathtaking. It's uh, bleakly beautiful. Stretches of stone beaches, uh, occasional single homes of stone caved in on themselves. Uh, sometimes on a high rocky outcropping along the way. Fields of grass bending in the wind. You can, at this distance, you think you see little flecks of white and wonder if you're seeing sheep this far out. Eventually, the dandridge draws close enough to serenity uh, for you to spot a small seaside village of sorts. And before long, you dock, and the four of you are standing on a humble wooden dock in a place you might hesitate to call a village, really. A, a dirt and gravel road runs along the coast here, bordered by a low stone wall. There's a, a string of small, meager cottages and what appears to be a pub directly up the path from where you now stand. You assume, because it has a little painted sign out front that says, Edge of the Isle. Hmm. Um, you see a few people walking about town. They are humbly dressed. This is um, remote as it gets. And some of you have heard of serenity before in passing. It is remote. Sometimes people talk about it mockingly. Declan never did. He was fond of it. While at the same time admitting that he couldn't wait to leave as a young man. Um, some tourists have tried to make a go of it here too, but it never really quite stuck. It is just Half of a village on the edge of the known world in the Fairlands. It's perfect. Did, um... I don't remember, did Zora give us the address? No. Are there addresses here? Here's another question. Uh, well, looking at <laughs> a small handful of homes that are here, you don't... You actually don't see any street signs or wow. house numbers. They are all very humble little cottages. There are thatched roofs on all of these places. I mm. bet it we, if we ask at the pub. That's, I was going to say, in this town this small, they probably know. Yeah, I'm sure Leo would deal for a nice good proper drink anyway, so it's killing two birds with one stone. Are we not having a drink at the pub? <laughs> that seems very rude not to. <laughs> Well, let's go. And I don't drink alone, so everyone's drinking too. You only get one a day, though. We've had that conversation. So what? you're, you step up this muddy little path away from the docks. Um, mm -hmm. I turn around to the ship. Uh, we'll go and check it out, figure out what's going on, and we'll come back as soon as possible to let you know the situation. Keep you updated when we can. Sure. Well, we're leaving. Leaving a day, right? As far as I know, yes. Do you want anything from town? <laughs> Whatever they got in that place. Mm -hmm. I thought you'd say that. I'll also say, if anyone strange comes up, let's not let, any, let anybody on board. And uh, perhaps at night, let's dock far enough away that nobody uh, make it a little more difficult to sneak on. And would you like me to uh, pull out and go? ways away? Not too far. Stay within signaling distance, just in case. Just in case. Right, well, I've had too much happen. We won't go so far that we can't have eyes on this spot. So this is the spot. All right. I believe this will be the spot. If you gentlemen can take the mm. different ships to the basement, just make sure our, our uh, shipment is secured. That'd be mm. greatly appreciated. 
I would like to think that the trouble we had the other night was a one-time thing. Uh, I run a pretty tight ship normally. We don't have any issues. Mm. If I'm you sure. ever wanted to hire us again, I wouldn't expect the same. No. Again, 15 years since I've seen anything like that. Just being cautious. Yeah. No. Okay, so he, uh, you watch from the dock, you delay for a moment in the ship, slowly pulls away. You don't watch it for too long, but you see it withdrawing from the island of serenity. And turn and look up at the edge of the aisle as you stand on the edge of the aisle. Heading on in? Yeah. Nope. Okay. No do. Well, it is a room barely bigger than the table we're sitting at. There is a little peat stove, uh, which smells wonderful, and there are wooden tables and stools on a dirt floor. Um, there is a barkeep, there is a man standing at what really just looks like a wooden plank. Uh, he's in his 50s, has graying hair and a beard to match, a warm brown skin, a broad nose, and well-worn wrinkles at the corner of his, his almond eyes and smile. Uh, morning to you. Morning, sir. Morning to you. Morning, sir. Absolute pleasure. Can we get four glasses of alcohol, please? <laughs> Right, it's well, like we have choices for you. Mm -hmm. Bruised face. Yeah, I'm sorry I didn't mean to stare. Yeah. <laughs> it's a birthmark. <laughs> you should see the other guy. Hmm. <laughs> well, you bringing trouble? No. To Serenity? No, we're actually just looking for an old friend. Oh, all right. Last name. Have you heard of him? Sorry. No. I didn't mean to step on you. No, no please. No. I mean, and a bit of a drink first before we, we, we go. We well, go we got in. Uh, beer. We've got Puccin, mm. and we've got, uh, if you got a coin to spend, I got one bottle of whiskey. Oh, I think we need some whiskey. I think we have, I, I had so many thoughts, and then you said that, and I believe the bottle of whiskey will do quite nicely. All right. Uh, he leans back behind this desk, and a cat, a mangy cat, just sort of like walks out onto the bar, swishing its tail, and then lies down and flops, and... <laughs> Just sort of stares mm. at you guys lazily, tail swishing as it goes. Mm. He turns around and he's got a whiskey and four glasses that are cleanish. This town seems fine. Did you all have any trouble with the storm the other night? Oh, geez, it was terrible. Uh, yeah, there was uh, thunder for hours. Uh, my own house, uh, part of the fence got knocked down, and uh, three of my sheep. I still haven't found him. I'm sorry. Yeah, we were on a ship during then, so we're a little happy to be on land right now. Oh, mother above. It was quite a lot. Mother above, that sounds terrible. Yeah. <laughs> this, this, this isn't a birthmark. I know, lass. <laughs> I know. Didn't um, need to worry. You notice for the first time that there are two more people in the pub there is, because uh, they were to the right of the door, so you just walk right past them. It's just a, a pale, drably dressed uh, elderly woman with stringy white hair, and there's a small boy, filthy face, uh, sitting next to her in the corner, and he's eating a, a bowl of porridge or something, um, and she's drinking a glass of something dark. What do you What do you think of this whiskey? Do you have an opinion on it? Out of curiosity. Were you asking? Oh, the bartender. I'm oh. so sorry. Yes. The child. Uh, I actually haven't gotten his name yet. Either, oh, so. Dermot. My name is Dermot. Dermot. Dermot Ooh. Gallagher. That's a good name. Thank you. No, it's fabulous. I collect them. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. What's the question? What do you think of this whiskey? Oh, well, it's the only whiskey we can get here. You've had a glass before, though. I have. Would you like a glass now? Are you offering to buy me a drink? I'm offering to buy you, and I think she looks a little rough, too. Not the child, obviously. I'm not buying him. He has to pay for his own, but, uh... This one? Yes. Just a nipper. Where Everyone you, had a rough night. Why are you picking up the accent? <laughs> <laughs> First time traveling, we're very excited. You know what? That's charming. Yours is on the house, not you. Oh, thank you. Uh, I wouldn't expect it. He begins pouring mm. five drinks. We've all had a rough about night. me? You've had enough. I haven't had enough. Boy is just spooning porridge into his face. Mag, you've had enough. And I don't want to hear another word. Yeah, another possibly. 
My money's gonna says another glass. Shakes his head at you. Mm. Speaking of trouble, actually. Ten years I've been listening to oh. this one. Sorry. Sir. No, I mean, she's. Is it ten years on that one? Thank the mother, no. My God. She's uh, old enough to be my mother. <laughs> I never want to judge. No. Well, since you brought up trouble, um, we actually have a friend that we were looking for who uh, is actually he's from, he's from around these parts, I believe. Oh, do tell. Uh, 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 Murphy, Declan Murphy. Well, there's uh, there's the Murphys up on the two miles up the up the island, yeah. Mm. Two miles, two miles up. Uh, yeah, you just head out the pub and take a right. There's not a lot here, if you haven't noticed. No, it's very peaceful. So, which Murphys live here n most of the time? Well, it's a family. Uh, I knew uh, their mother Margaret mm. uh, for a spell, but. They keep to themselves mostly. So you've never you've never met Declan. He's no stories or anything. He's a bit of an odd duck. No, I mostly knew his mom. I've heard his name said not a long time. Uh... Well, we... how's my bullshit detector right now? Out of curiosity. <laughs> hmm? How's my bullshit detector right now? Ah, uh, well, you have to roll for that. I'm happy yeah. to. Where's my glasses? Uh, that would be. Uh, what would that be? Uh, your yeah. skill called lie detector, which you'd uh, love to read, read out to the uh, table? Uh, yes, I've got um, a read, which is interpret body language, spot mm -hmm. lies, gather, uh, gather motives. Um, I also have a thing called sweet talk, oh. which Ooh. is after I've made small talk with someone for a little while, I can add a, an extra die on any read roll I make in which uh, they are the target. That's how you booty on a shot. If the target, if the cunning, my cunning, uh, if your current cunning resistance is two or higher, uh, then one of the dies is gilded. Right. So take your pick, pick your poison. Um, well, I'm trying to see if, if cunning resistance uh, is. Which one are we focusing on? Lie uh, detector or sweet? No, talk? that is sweet talk. I also have lie detector. I was yes. going to do both. Oh, you're I'm sorry. That was sweet it. talk. Woo! And it's when I do a reroll in an attempt to figure out whether a person is telling the truth, I can gild an uh, additional die. All right. So that's um, two gilded dice. Very nice. And uh, so that's a uh, one, two, three dice, and two are gilded. It's four dice and two are gilded, excuse me. No, wait, one, two, three, three dice and two are gilded, excuse me. All right. Two Ooh, sixes, wow. on both on gilded. Wow. Two candelas. I don't even know what that means anymore. Both, wait, do you? Two candelas. Two candelas, Can, okay. both gilded. Okay, okay. As we have dubbed them, candelas. So I suppose you'll take the gilded, right? I'm gonna uh, take either of them. So you, drink in this man's charm and his mm -hmm. accent and his story and a lot of it seems true to you a lot of it mm. but. but it does seem off he does seem to be circling something his smile's just a little too wide or quick oh, to your so. jokes <laughs> something about it mm. Anyways, let me pour for you all. Thank you. <clears throat> Where am I? What he's doing? When he's uh, having this interaction with Leo? Right. What's your question? No, for the for the uh, for the for the uh, for you. Yeah. So where am I in the room? Oh, it's a very small room. So you guys are basically crowded in the center of it. So I would hear what was going. Oh, on. Oh, you okay. you can't escape the conversation. The little okay. kid can hear every bit of this conversation. I want to talk to the barkeep. Sure. You seem a little nervous to me, mm. sir. Is there anything that might be troubling to do at all, or anything? Well, it's not often we get visitors to the island, but I don't feel nervous, no. No. Have you seen anything like out of the ordinary in the past like two days? Like you've, that you said the Murphys are up this up the hill, yeah. and you say you know the mother. Anyone else in the family might come along, like frequent the pub or maybe might make rounds into the town. No, I haven't seen any of the Murphys. Uh, I seen one of the daughters maybe a month ago. Daughters? Oh. Huh. Thank you. We're looking in at an old friend and we've never visited them at their home before, so we were just asking some questions. Well, the Murphys are there. They've been on this island 
for decades. Uh, they come down in town a few times a year, but a lot of people here keep to themselves. That's, That's the beauty of Serenity. Oh. That's the beauty of Serenity! <laughs> mm. I want to have a chat with that lady. Oh, God. Where is she? How, how drunk is she? Is she like, is she, is she like vomiting? She's, she's is there any vomiting. actual water in her? Is what I want to know. Is it just pure? Uh, <laughs> it's all, it's all dust. It's all. Uh, I want to walk over to her. Madam, how do you do? I'd be doing better if I had another glass of whiskey. Oh, I bet you would. I bet you would. I could smell that. <laughs> Have you noticed anything strange? What's your name? My name is uh, Malcolm. What's your name? Beatrice. Oh, that's a beautiful name. You're a handsome one. You're, you're, well, thank you, my lady. You're quite charming yourself. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions, Beatrice? Aye. Would you be up for that? Uh, I'm gonna whisper with Leo. Get her. Oh. Just a small little, a small little something. Just enough to keep her awake. My oh, hair oh no. not that bad, lad. <laughs> Get her something stronger than I am not getting involved in this one, excuse me. And I'm going to back up and I'm just gonna side eye the kid really quickly. And then I'm going to uh, walk outside. I'm gonna give the kid a little bit of, I'm so sorry, I can't believe this is. And I'm gonna go sit outside to see if, see if I, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll come out see. with you and pull out like a little, what's that game you used to play with, with kids? It's like a pickup. Jacks. Jacks. I'll pull, I don't know why I would have one, but I do. <laughs> I'll pull, pull and maybe whatever, of, like, whatever bench stuff. we're on, but like I would love to sit in front of the window the kid's at so he can see us play. Oh, even just the same, yeah, we're just, I'm just sitting, sitting, taking But may, maybe hoping that he'll come out. And yeah, no, I'm trying to, yeah, because yeah. since the mom's talking. Right. So. Okay. I watched them both walk out. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm in yeah. charge of them. Beatrice, have you noticed anything strange uh, in the past couple of days, anything that might have been out of the ordinary. Well, you think, lot showed up before, before, before the lot showed up. Was there anything maybe similar or Ten equally as strange <laughs> before we showed up that you might have noticed? Are you talking about the storm? Yes, yeah, the storm. Was there something that happened before the storm? Anyone that you might have noticed before the storm occurred? Someone out of place. That bastard Pete Mulligan was in my yard. Mm. Pete Mulligan, is that, is that your, your neighbor? Aye. He's a dirty wee fecker. Mm. So, I take you two haven't dated then. Say again? Nothing. So, Pete Mulligan. Anything else besides Pete Mulligan? Any, any, uh, anything that you might have seen? Or have you, have you heard of the Murphys? Are you familiar with the Murphys? I don't truck with them. No. Why not? Eldest daughter's a bitch. Mm. <laughs> What's the eldest daughter's name, by any chance? You maybe, that? maybe Grania. Grania. That's the eldest daughter, huh? Yes. The only other thing strange is I have a urine infection. <laughs> mm. That sounds tasty. <laughs> Well, Beatrice, I think this has been a lovely conversation. Before I make my leave, anything else you want to recollect? Hemorrhoids or something else you want to confess? You're a handsome one. Oh, thank you so much. You have yourself a lovely day, Miss Beatrice. Take care of yourself, okay? You can get her some water, please. I'm not here. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah, just the bartender. Yeah, sorry. I have another whiskey. Let's go outside. I'm gonna go outside. Mm -hmm. did, the, did the kid leave or no? Is the kid still there? A uh, kid has uh, s scrabbles out just before Malcolm leaves, and he silently comes and sits down and just watches you for a bit. What? What is wrong with you? That was the most conspicuous thing I've ever seen anybody do. <sighs> you win some, you lose some. How are you ever going to win that? You never know. Who knows where you can get your information from? Sometimes, when you're a little no. bit high on the drink, you get a little more no. information than you think. No, I'm not. Rhyme. Never mind. I'm not talking about her. I'm talking about you. 
boy is, looks like he's never seen so wonderful a toy as Jax. Do you want to learn how to play? Well, she teaches him how, because Amy doesn't know. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> you bounce the ball and see how many Jacks you can get. Okay, up then you bounce the ball okay, and okay. see how many of these you can get. Why don't you try? How old's the kid, by the way? Oh, like five. Jacks go everywhere. Oh, you're doing such a good job. Isn't it fun? Can I ask the kid a question while she plays Jacks? Mm -hmm. No. no we, I shoo you away immediately. <laughs> <laughs> You go ahead. Um, and there, and there are, it's not totally abandoned. You see um, uh, a woman maybe in her 30s uh, with like a, a basket of, of clothes or wash or something walking up the road. She passes, she exits one building and heads up, up the road and then walks off. Not the distance you were, direction you were told to go, but in the opposite direction. There's uh, some old man sitting up the road like on a stool in front of a, one of the cottages on the way to uh, apparently the Murphys. Um, but it's quiet here, it's... The old man walking towards the Murphys, is it you said? There's a man sitting. Sitting, okay, uh, yeah. all right. I, I, uh, listen, I think what we need to do is just go to the house and make a, and investigate the Murphys right now. Yes, it'll be one moment. Are we, are we gonna sit here with the, are we, Oh, I'm, we, we have chewed you both away. We're, I assume, yeah, this is just... Uh, I'm sorry, are you objecting my... to them sitting with a child while you just talk to that woman for mm -hmm. 45 minutes? Oh, well, yeah. Oh, that's true. This could have been happening beforehand, actually. But that's true. Yeah. Um, why don't you guys get a head start? Yeah, we'll, we'll meet you there. Up. Walk slowly. Okay, so you two are moving up the road I'm sure in the general we'll... direction? Mm -hmm. yeah. And you two are hanging back? No, yes. they're, they're hanging back. We're, we're playing our jacks. Way. Who, who's playing Jax? The two of us. Jax, Jax, yeah. yeah. Okay, you Jax, 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 and, the, and the, the child. You two gentlemen. The kid has not said a word, but he For is sure. raptured. For sure. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like, mm. can we take the child with us? I, uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> can we, can we well, put him in? This is a very you, small why island. Why don't uh, we start with, um, yeah. have, you, have you ever seen this game before? You know, it came all the way from New Fair. Have you heard of that city, New Fair? Yeah. Have you ever met anybody from New Fair? Anyone come by any strangers lately? Can you point me to where they live or where they are? And he points in the direction that uh, Malcolm and Edgar are walking. Do you want to ask him? It was a man, I suppose. Was he alone or did he have friends? Just him. Was he scary? Did he seem nice? Was he scary? Hmm. We're worried about him, he's a friend of ours, but we haven't seen him in a very long time. So, we're just trying to figure out what happened. He, uh, it has been so long and the boy has said absolutely nothing and he starts to sink in that this boy can't or doesn't talk. I'm fine with that. I'm enjoying the game. You can keep this if you want, for all your help. He looks in the window at Grandma. Beatrice, who is now kind of like <laughs> semi leaned into the window. You know, you're smart enough to know to hide these, correct? Yes, when you take them, you just put them somewhere safe. And uh, I'm going to make sure that the next few bowls of porridge are on the house. You've been really helpful. If you hear anything, just let us know. Just give us a little. <laughs> or knock on wood. If I hear a knock, if we say something stupid, please let us know. In addition to you guys are being so mm -hmm. kind to this boy and that's obviously having an effect, he also is just sort of marveling at your uh, <clears throat> your outfits and your hair. And even though it's a little bit, a little bit crimped from everything you've gone through, he's not seen anything the looks of you especially you two. 
I'm going to go in and put a little money down on a, on a tab. It is a very big world out there, child. Take your time. This is going to be terrible, but you will find something delightful if you wait a little bit and go over the horizon. You're too smart for this place. And I'm going to go in and put $20 on just just for food on the kid, no matter what. Oh, 20 bills. 20 bills. 20 bills. 20 bills, thank you, I was yeah, trying to remember. Sure, sure. While, he, while uh, he does that, she sort of straightens up his little hair, tucks it behind her ears, grabs a little bit of her thing and wipes his face off. And then just makes sure she like grabs him by the hand and walks him back in the, the pub. Hey. Thank you. Silently goes over and pushes himself up on a bench and looks at his grandmother. He looks at her big, tall drink, and then just picks up his bowl. <laughs> oh, God, what? <laughs> uh, oh, so we'll you guys hung up. back a little bit, so you both headed up the road. Walking slowly. We'll slowly, be, sure. We'll double time. Yeah, I mean, again, when I say village on the edge of the aisle, there, there's maybe 20 buildings here, tops. Um, and you can see, like, in the distance, you know, the, the coast here just sort of bends and curves, and there's one single cottage in the distance that is not two miles away, but uh, you know, this seems to be the center of, mm -hmm. of serenity. But as you guys reach the end of this little road, this row of cottages, you, you, you reach this uh, very wiry old man, vaguely reminiscent of the persona that Grimoria took on. <laughs> um, uh, he has a shock of barely a shack of white hair. You can see more scalp than anything. And he is gaunt and, and hunched. And there is like a stick or a cane lying on the ground next to him and a, and a tall glass in the dirt next to him on his stool. And as you guys get approach, uh, as you approach him, he doesn't look, but just says, oh, hey, we got visitors again. How's all? Good afternoon. Mm. Um, afternoon to you. Visitors again. Yes, we're on our way to see some friends who previously went this way. Previously went this way, eh? Yeah. Are you going to the Murphys? We I are. Hmm. You know of them? Oh, yeah, they've lived here. Time out of mind. Oh. Oldest girl there is a bit of a surly one, but uh, they're all right, they're good folk, their son's in town. Yeah, that's our friend. Oi. Hi. Have you seen him? Have you seen him recently? <laughs> I ain't seen nothing for years. Oh, <laughs> My apologies. Oh, that's all right. I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> no, but I can't see. But I... Uh, <laughs> I did talk to him a handful of days ago. And he was heading home. Hasn't been in a while. Comes, you know, once or twice a year. So, we're friendly, like. Is he the only one who's there now? Does he have his family there as well? Or? Aye, aye. Uh, I believe, you know, it's him and his mum. And uh, he's got three sisters. His oldest uh, four children. Oh, that's oldest. What was his oldest sisters again? Him again? Oh, that's Grania. Grania, that's right. right. Let's see, there's Grania. She's a tough one. There's uh, Nora and we Peggy. Thank you. Anyway, you're just looking for him? Yeah. We are. You gotta take him back home? I always wanna make sure he's okay. I mean, why would you wanna leave such a beautiful place anyway if you don't have to right away, right? Oh, it's the most beautiful sight you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, enjoy our island. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your information, sir. Right, right. There will be two of our company that arrived with us following us up the road. They're just a couple steps behind. I can hear them. There's a little one there. And a regular size one, I that think. Would, that would be them. Uh. Hello to you. Hello. Hello. I was right. I'm always right. 
picks up the glass. He sort of feels gently for it and finds his glass and takes a big swig of it, places it back down. Ah, fucking rain the other day. It was a lot. Where was you for it? On the ship. What ship? The that ship, one over there. The ship that dropped us off. Ah, right, that's how you got Yeah. <laughs> Usually quicker than that. Mm-hmm. Gentlemen and lady, apologies, apologies. Oh no, I'm already, I'm already delighted. Hmm. Well, my name's Ned. I live here. If you need to find Ned, Ned's here. Thanks, Ned. Thanks, Ned. Very helpful. I will give him ten bills for his trouble. What is this? That's just something for your trouble. Oh. Maybe treat you to a meal for tonight. What's the number on this bed? That's the number ten, Ned. Oh. Feck me. <laughs> Buy yourself a few meals with that, huh? And figure out uh, which which uh, pubs are honest, so you'll know very quickly when they tell you if they tell you it's anything other than oh, ten. There's only the one pub. Well, then you're in trouble. I don't think he's very honest. Oh. <laughs> Oh, he's all right. But Dermot's all right. Does Dermot have anything against the Murphys? Is there any, like, interesting... It's a small town. Right. Please, I miss gossip. Sure. Oh, no. I... Gossip we have here. Everybody knows each other's business. If I can tell you what. <laughs> Everybody knows what this one's got a grudge on him for that, and she wants to strangle that one with her bare hands. You know, you were trapped in a small space here, so... Oh, yeah, no, I know. My family was the exact same way. I haven't seen them in years. I miss this sort of thing. Mm. He, I don't know. I got to read. I got the vibe that he was not no. necessarily... Well, I don't know any bad blood between Dermot Gallagher and any of the Murphys, no. They're, they're friendly with each other, then. Uh, Even the older one? No, then you want to avoid the older <laughs> one there. <laughs> oh, that's what everyone keeps telling me. Bad. Oh, that's good. I love truth not like truth. people. I bet she's just misunderstood. Mm. Well, there's only one way to find <laughs> Sounds out. Sounds like someone who hasn't met the eldest Murphy girl. <laughs> You're right, I haven't. Thank you for your help, Ned. Mm. Oh, sure, lass. How are you today? Oh, we've seen better. Well, <laughs> I've seen better. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, it took me a second. <laughs> <laughs> and it's me own joke. <laughs> well, 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 well. I hope you have a, a fine day. And Ned is here. I'm Ned. Thanks, Ned. Thanks, Ned. Absolute pleasure. Goodbye, Ned. You guys mm-hmm. begin to stroll away from the edge of the aisle and this mm-hmm. small cove of cottages. Um, and make your way along this really hauntingly beautiful coastline. Um, And you pass by, you begin to walk for a while, and um, it is just such a stark change from your night on the ship. Um, You do see other people though still. Um, There's a field in the distance on like a gently sloping hill and there's like a couple, man and woman, Maybe they have married vibes. I don't know. That's just a guess. But they're traveling in a, with a whole flock of sheep around them. And when they spot you, they just kind of hold and stare. I'm going to wave. That's interesting. Hold on. I'm gonna wave again. This is at a distance. Okay. They never stop staring at you. They're probably like 2,000 feet away. Like they're, they're up a hill. Is it public or private property, does it seem like? Other things. It's hard to read property lines here. It okay, just looks so. like a. It would make sense. That we're getting these reactions, we don't look like anyone here, and I don't think anyone comes here. I have had a lot of reactions in my life, but standing perfectly still like a deer is unusual. Normally it's forward or backward. You get close to that one 
solo cottage which just got a little bit of smoke coming out of the chimney through its thatched roof. You saw this from the distance and as you get closer to it, a door opens and uh, a gentleman, probably like 25, um, just in like a, a white shirt with the sleeves and he's carrying some sort of a leather satchel as he walks out and he sees you guys. It's a birthmark. And he walks on, he doesn't even respond to that. He just walks past you on the road and you see him travel down the way you came. Um, and I think we just look weird to them. I think we're just odd. I'm not certain. Again, I'm used to an awful lot of uh, reactions. These are strange. Yeah, you're you're just used to the city. You're a little bumped, Leo, and there. I'll say as you pass this cottage and you kind of look back over your shoulder and you see the man. He hasn't, he's still walking, but you see that couple again up on the hill. And there. Are we, are we close to the Murphy Cottage? Don't see, you've only been walking for a couple minutes. They said like two miles. Oh, That's shit. like okay, so 20 or 30 miles, minutes. Sorry. Yeah. Right? All right, so I guess we're gonna go with definitely, I mean, grab mm -hmm. the clue. Give me two and a half good reasons why I shouldn't go talk to that couple right now. We should, I'll give you no good reason. I think we should go talk to the couple. Oh, I, am in, I, am in, uh, I am in agreement with you. Doctor, you're the smart one. Please. I just think we should leave these people alone. I, think... I kind of agree. I think we should go to the, keep going. We just go see if, we, look, we're just here to see if Declan's here and all right. Yeah, but ever when... since we got to this island, we... That's on the two of you. We just have to check in, say hello, and then we go home. Everybody I've talked to has been very generous and reasonable. Well, why don't we do this? Why don't we scratch our itch? And why don't you guys go to the cottage, and then we'll meet up at the cottage. Or we'll catch up with you. Just go talk to them. It's fine. We're gonna go try it. <sighs> okay, yes? Just a little bit. I want to see what their reaction is if we start walking toward them. Let me do the talking, just <clears throat> for the beginning until things get strange, which I think they're inevitably are going yeah. to. Well, they're, they're the they road are road road staring road. at you, and you go off road, which means you are pretty quickly sort of like wading through very tall grass. Any any way I can avoid as much of it as possible. Right. <laughs> right. There's stone too, so when you can, you are sort of like Billy Goat hopping from. Any reaction? Yes, uh, they are watching from up high, and when you get like 30 feet off the road coming in their direction, they turn around and they just walk in the opposite direction Ooh. through their sheep. They're not running, they're just walking away. Hmm. Which direction are they going? Up a hill. Is there any structure over there or anything like that? No, not from this view. Well, that seems like uh, an invitation that has been taken away. Am I hearing any interesting sounds, voices? Mm. You are still hearing um, a bit of distortion or, or maybe it's just that everyone's voice feels a little more um, crisp or intense in, okay. in your eardrums, but also, you know, there's wind uh, yeah. blowing on this island and, uh, you know. Pretty quiet. Every once in a while, though, you swear. Nothing I can make out. No. I'm fine to turn back. I just wanted to see what it would take to spook them. And I think that they have, mm, I think that there's a very, I think they're afraid of where we're going. I don't know, maybe I'm just paranoid now. All right. Okay. I'll turn back around. I'll, 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 if you're satisfied, I'm satisfied. I'll trust your instincts. And you wade back down to the grass and join your colleagues and continue along this dirt road for a while and it is just quiet and windy and you want to enjoy it but it is hard to deny the the oddity of some of the people who live here and you walk for like five minutes or ten minutes and there is uh, you, you start to approach this stunted tree at one bend in the road in a spot where there's no other defining feature and you walk past and you couldn't see her, but right there on the other side of the tree is a tiny elderly woman in black with like a headscarf on. She is a little shorter than you are 
and she has a face like a dried apple. Oh God. Uh, and she has got sort of an apron on, shawl, headscarf, and. Oh, hello. <gasps> like she, she's 15 feet away from you, and you were, she didn't see her, and she's just <gasps> staring at you. Hello. <laughs> sorry, you startled us. I'm so sorry, ma'am. What's your name, if you don't mind? My name's Roisin. Roisin. You give me the sense of someone who knows something that we should know. Like we were making... I don't want to talk out of turn, but we're from out of town. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> and everyone seems to be getting very nervous. We don't and... get a lot of outsiders here on the island. People come home, though. People leave. People come back. I don't know about that. Mm. We have a friend who might have come back. Maybe you might know of him. His name's Declan. You ever know of a Declan? Murphys? Oh, well, you know of the Murphys? They live up the road about a mile. No, yeah, yeah. Yes? What do you know about the Murphys, other than that the eldest daughter's a bit much? The eldest daughter is a bit of a bitch. Mm. <laughs> Are you sure she's not just misunderstood? I don't know if she is or if she isn't. What are you doing here on Serenity? Well, we're, we're just looking for a friend. We're friends with one of the de one of the Murphys, and we're coming to visit him. We don't get a lot of visitors on I Serenity. Gathered. He told us so much about this beautiful town. We just had to see it for ourselves. It's so beautiful. Why? Why do you think you don't get many visitors? Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful. Oh, they tried for years, but. They don't like it in the end, because hmm. there's nowhere to go. Do you like it? I don't know if I do or if I don't. That's fair. Do you like the Murphys? I don't have much business with the Murphys. I am trying to read this, this woman. I know it's a lot to push. I just feel like she's... Eating an apple. She's nervous about something, and I'm trying to hit it. I'm, I don't think I'm ready to roll quite yet, but. What's wrong? Can we help? We're happy to help, anything to. Uh, this place is just lovely, and we do eventually have to leave, but I would like to give a good impression. I don't know what to tell you on that. Uh, Do you need help? Is there trouble? You'd be amazed what we can do. It's a hard life on Serenity. Mm. A lot of our young ones leave. That can happen. Just like my own brother. What now I on 70 years ago. Mm. Went to live in New Fair. It's a shame that they don't come back after a while. You think that Murphy boy, he come back? We think he did. We think he did too. We're actually looking for him. He's a friend of ours. You should try the Murphys. That's... Mile up the road. Do you have any advice for talking to the Murphys? <laughs> when you talk Avoid Grania. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, town seems to think that. Well, if you think of anything we should know, or if you have any advice about anything, I'm always excited to learn something new. If you don't mind me asking, what is it about Grania that people don't like? I'm very <laughs> curious. She never has a kind word to say about anyone. Hmm. Sometimes she can be a bit much. Excited. Bit much. I try to avoid. Bit much like violence, conniving. What's a bit much? What would you What would you, what would you say? Much. I just means she's a bit of a bitch. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, to be fair, Declan can be a bit of a bitch as well. <laughs> um. Well, we're gonna go. I don't know. Obviously, you haven't seen Declan and. 
I don't even know the last time you've talked to the Murphys. Do you talk to the Murphys? You don't talk to nobody. Mm. Mm. I don't want to be talking to you. I we can tell. And yeah, other than that lovely couple um, over over in the field over there, who's, who seemed quite nice. I'm trying to remember their names. So they're. Uh, what are their names? There's I'm, sheep around them. What were their names? Uh, There's sheep all over the island. Oh, the, the couple that find live over there. You won't find anyone who doesn't have a sheep on this island. I'm just pointing. The, the couple that live over there. McNamaris. Hmm? McNamaris. The McNamaris. They all right? They're all right. All right. Well, I'm sure we're taking up way too much of your time, but it was lovely having a chat with anybody out here. Right then. Have a good rest of your day. Yes. Right then. And if you need anything, just ask for the uh, strangers. I'm sure we're the only ones right now. I'm sure that's true enough, true enough. <laughs> we owe you a favor. And I put my hand on her shoulder. I'm so sorry for your loss. And respond. She freezes up, stiffens at your touch. After we walk away for a bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm giving the two of them a little room. I can't wait till you're done. <laughs> Do we continue up the road? Oh. I don't know if something about to happen. Did I miss something? No, I just was shooting my shot and oh. seeing if she said anything, but she's shocked, so maybe she's shocked into silence. I think it's time for us to make our leaves to the Murphys. She doesn't respond, and she doesn't move. She just watches you go. He's here with you always. <laughs> Fenton. Yes. That's not possible. It is possible. That makes for scurry down the road. You gotta shoot your shot. Mm, no. Uh, have, have you all ever spoken to someone in a normal manner? Any of you? These are not normal people. They're I do not know what you normal people. people. They're just people who live on an island and don't have a lot of communication skills. You were doing your thing, weren't you? Oh my god. I was trying it. What name did you get? Vincent. Oh, Vincent, that's so good. Do you know, dead brother, dead, dead Oh, son. I don't know, I was just guessing because she was wearing all black. Mm, good job, good job. They're gonna think we're witches. <laughs> we are. <laughs> so, uh, we're heading further up the coast, yes. closing the distance. Okay, so you walk, and the landscape bends and twists, but stays largely the same. Just white caps on the sea and sheep on every hill. Eventually, you see a house away from the coast up on a new hill. Um, and it looks like there's a, a thorough fire going because there's smoke curling up. And you can see uh, and to the rear of the house, there's like a little, well, there's a fenced in area, there's a pen. Um, and uh, like an old, there's one single tree outside this home and there's just like a rope swing, two ropes, with just like a slat hanging, just sort of blowing in the nonstop wind out here. And it's been about, it doesn't say the Murphys, but it's been about two miles. It's a safe bet. Do we have any idea what his family thinks he does? Like, you know what I mean? Like what his day job is or? His cover. Um, from conversations conversations you've had with him, you gather they probably think he is still a history teacher. Ah, cool. Okay. I'm gonna walk up and I just knock on the door. Okay. In moments you hear boom, 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 and the door opens and you see a woman, late thirties, and shoulder length brown hair, uh, sort of a flinty expression, and she just. Grania. Oh, Grania. <laughs> what did you just want? Excuse us, we're here to see Declan. Ah, uh, well, he's not here right now. Who are you? 
We're friends of his from New Fair. The university. I'm, I, we're students. I'm not. I'm a teacher. What you come here for? He's a good friend of ours and we wanted to check in on him. We hadn't heard from him for a while. He's visiting a family. Oh, well, he didn't take a leave of absence or anything. And I was hoping he'd grade my paper. We were just a little concerned about our friend. Another woman pops in behind her. What are you doing over here? Nora? I don't know who the... Yes? Uh, I'm sorry. Go mind the pigs. I'm telling uh. you to mind the fucking pigs. I'll mind the fucking pigs when I want to. She stalks off into the house. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, who, who are you? We're friends of Declan's, and we came to visit him and check on him. Oh, um, well, my brother's not here. Would you like to come in? We'd love to. All right. Yeah, sure. Um, you step in, and you can smell a fire burning. There's like a little fireplace in here. It's it's humble. It's not awful. It's not like dilapidated or anything. It's cozy, but it's old. Um, and uh, it's like one large room, and there's a door that leads probably towards the rear of the home in here. And there is an old woman sitting in a rocking chair by a window, like 20 feet away from you, across the room. And the rocking chair is kind of rocking, and and she's like a, a like a stockier, older woman, with sort of graying, reddish brown hair. And the 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 rocking chair is rocking. She's just sort of staring out the window. So you're just seeing the back of her head. Um, come in, come in. Nora Thank you. says. All right. Um, yeah, my uh, my brother. Uh, he he's out for a walk right now. I can't imagine he'll be gone long. If, if is everything all right? Yes, yeah, everything's fine as far as we know. We just were sailing by or returning home, and we he had told us that this is where he grew up. Oh, goodness. And we knew that he was here visiting. So we you're want... coming from the big city then? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh. I'm clearly. Oh, my. I know we look a little out of place. Oh, my. Uh, a third sister comes in. Um, the, the woman you were just speaking to, Nora, has sort of like very short, short cut hair on the verge of pixie cut, but um, a little mousier. Um, and then this third woman that comes in is, is petite and has her same color hair, but it's like tied tightly back into a ponytail. And she's all smiles. Oh my, did you come from Newfair? We did. Hi. That's amazing. Hello. And you came to see Declan, did you? Yes. Oh yes. Oh goodness. Oh, he's out taking a walk right now. Um, would you like a bit of tea or something? That would be lovely. That would be great. I'd like a bit of tea. Ah, ma. All right. <laughs> tea? Yes. Sure, I'd really? love spot. Go up to Margaret. Hello, Mother Margaret. Uh, I'm Grimoria. I'm a student of your son. Uh, How are you doing? I'm hungry. Oh, we should get you something to eat. Would you get me something to eat? She looks back out the window. Are you looking for someone? Declan's out. How long has he been gone? Part of the day. Oh. But he always comes home. Of course he always comes home. Doesn't he always come home? You're always worrying, he's fine. He's gone up to the fairy homes. Fairy Fairy homes? Aye. And she turns away from you, looks out the window. Uh, Nora leans down the hallway that leads out the back, going like, How are they? Do they have to be fed? I'm fucking feeding them, I said I would. Mother above. I'd be in a bad mood too if I had to feed the pigs. I'm gonna see if they need any help with anything. I see a kitchen and I desperately want to see it. There uh, is a kitchen, although, um, so we've mm. got, uh, Grania went out the back to the pigs and Nora and Piggyn are playing host, although Piggyn is like working out. There's like a tea kettle over the fire and she's stoking the fire and getting it going to make the tea. There is a kitchen, no one's in there right now, but there is a, uh, it's a drab little place and there is a little, uh, a little ice box and um, a simple wooden table and there is like a painting on the wall of four little kids um, of various age, probably like between uh, eight and, and 15. Does it seem like a family portrait? 
Yeah, it's the kids okay, together. It's one boy. I was just not making girls, sure. Right? It was the boy and three girls. Are the they kids? They fed to the pigs. I, I'm. I, there's. No, no, good question. It's entirely. There's it's weirder things have happened. Totally. Sometimes it is the photo that came with the frame. <laughs> um, it's not right. I was going to say I'd be happy to help cook if you like. I desperately miss it, and I'm quite good at it. Nora says, "Ah, oh, that's okay. We do have some biscuits. Do you want biscuits with your tea? Biscuits will be grand. Right? What sort of tea is this, by the way? I'm always is this local? <laughs> I just about everything here is local. Excellent. Um, if you want the uh, the uh, biscuits are in that cabinet uh, by the stove. If you want to oh. get." Thank you. Yes, I hate not being useful. I'm hungry. Maybe we should get Mother Margaret a biscuit. Quick. Everyone gets a biscuit. So you scuttle off to the kitchen, Mm. right? I am. You three are in here. You're by. Sorry to drop in on you like this unannounced. No, it's all right. I'm sure he'll be back any minute. Um, He's been gone about an hour or so. You all seem pretty worried about the fairy houses. Can you tell me more, a little bit about that? Don't worry about what me ma says. She's a bit dotty, you know. What are the fairy houses, though? Ah, they're old, uh, you know, they're old, like, uh, stone huts that have been there for ages, ages and ages. Um, Interesting. Nobody lives It's not right. What's not? She turns to you. What's not right about it? It's not right. Poor boy. Don't you believe him? I would love to believe him. It's not right. You hear behind you, boom, 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 boom. And Pegine, who was stoking the fire, has an iron poker, and she goes, <gasps> Oh, fuck. At what? Into the mother's head. Oh, shit. Which splits. And cranial matter and brain and blood goes, <gasps> And your face goes, <gasps> And Malcolm behind you, you hear boom, 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 boom. And Grania is there, and you turn around, and she goes, <sighs> and blows something into your face. And you immediately like, <coughs> start coughing as something just went up into your nostrils and down your throat. And you immediately feel like burning in the back of your throat and in your nose. And the mother's body just leans in the wheelchair, or excuse me, the uh, rocking chair, and begins to slowly spill pour out onto the rug and blood just starts going I think we should move at high speed um I'm going to try and find turns and runs at you okay before she does can I move can I do something you can attempt to move um I'm gonna attempt to move and also from my uh, little magician's kit I have what's sort of a smoke bomb that I use sometimes in my performances. And as she goes to strike either one of us, I attempt to like throw it and create some smoke <clears throat> to kind of frazzle her. Okay. I will say that the room, I will pause that die roll and say that the room instantly fills with smoke. And we hear the sound of uh, Nora and Pegine are both coughing Everyone's coughing. Now you are coughing a bit as well. Yeah. You especially are coughing. Like your whole throat and especially the inside of your nostrils and behind your eyes just feels like it's itching. There's a burn back there. Um, and it is hard to see in here for a minute. We can all see silhouettes moving in your sort of uh, magician's uh, improvised trick. Yep. And the iron poker that she was holding, you hear it go and you hear what you think was the middle sister, Nora, go the smoke starts to clear Um, you are in the kitchen when this happens and you out the back window, you see Grania Uh, you see her running away from the house, out the back, with something in her hand, and she is running out the back pen in this moment. Towards us? Away from from the house, out the back. Um, Is there a way out in the kitchen or no? No, 
the kitchen is off of a hall, long mm -hmm. hallway, and there's a couple more doors. And Pegin, the smoke is starting to clear. <laughs> and Nora is um, on the ground, and there is like blood pouring down her rib, and there is a huge gash because the poker, an iron poker, if you're unfamiliar, has a long yeah. spike, and then it's got a hook. It's a little hook, yeah. And that hook went. Uh, but Pegin rips the poker out, and she sees you coughing, and she comes running and starts to swing at you. Okay, well, I, I definitely want to dodge and parry. Okay, make a, uh, make a, make a move. Make You're going to dodge and parry? Yeah, well, I'm sorry, parry and, parry and strike. Parry, well, no, I mean, no, so I, was, I was thinking I might parry? be able well, well, I have nothing to dodge. Dealt with. You dodge. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a move, right? Yeah, you just got nauseous. Yeah. Okay, so I think it's, uh, yeah, Edgar's it's, just been sitting in the chair he was sitting in. He hasn't fully understood what's happening all of a sudden. He's just staring at the mother, just trying to figure Five. out what happened. Five gilded. Five gilded. So you choose that gilded, you get a drive, a drive in, in uh, and nerve. And happily fill that drive. Okay, you <laughs> refill that drive. <laughs> so you see her coming at you with an up-handed swing, and you throw yourself out of the way and feel your foot step on the old woman's arm, and you fall backward um, and stumble and uh, lightly wrap your head on the side of the, the rocking chair, and you are now on the ground. Um, and she is pulling the poker out of um, like a dresser cabinet that she has just obliterated the tabletop of, going <laughs> oh, I want to move to, I want to move to put her in a, in a bare naked choke hold. Uh, that'll be that'll be control, I think. Finesse, yeah. Awesome. No, or we could you do. Let's do strike. strike. I think that's strike. Oh my God, no baby, no baby, no no. Um, two, two. two. Well, no, no. <clears throat> two. You go. You pull yourself up, you're on your back, and you get up and you try to dive at her, and she somehow manages to pull the poker free and then bap the handle of it off the side of your face, pushing you down, and she scrabbles away and sort of plows into the side of the door, um, uh, grunts as she hits it and then turns to stand. Um, Nora on the floor, who is bleeding profusely, um, you uh, see a glint of metal, and she is swinging around from the floor and shoving a knife towards your thigh, oh, shit. Edgar. So you can make, you can do anything you want. Um, you're getting stabbed at the moment. Oh, good. Um, so Edgar, seeing, catching eyes with Nora kind of shakes him out of his confusion and then registers the knife and goes to essentially just kind of spin out of the chair away from Nora. So just to make a, a dodge. That is a four. A four. Mm -hmm. um, you lunge out of the way of this oncoming knife and you feel it tear through your pant mm -hmm. leg and you stumble back and feel yourself crash into uh, Pegine uh, by the door, wow. by the, the hallway that leads to the kitchen and out to the back. Who knows where Grania is at this moment, but you are now have stumbled into this young younger woman with, a, with a, poker. a poker in her hands. Uh, am I anywhere near him? Uh, uh, yeah, it's not that big a room. She, as soon as you come in close, takes the poker and then throws it over your head and begins to um, pull up and press into your throat. I, uh, if I can, reach into my coat. Yes. Where I do have my tools. Yes. And I take the scalpel and I'm just going to stick it in a very particular part of her thigh that will cause a lot of bleeding. Okay, so that is, for you, a focus, focus Because I have an anatomical strike, which I know where the body is most vulnerable, and when attacking an enemy, I may roll focus instead of strike. Great, so you go tumbling backwards, feel yourself plunge into this maddened woman, mm -hmm. and then you feel a metal bar under your throat, and you feel it starting to press hard into your atom. <laughs> Ooh, that would be a four. A four. I'm distracted, but I get my guilt back. Oh, okay. Um, 
she screams in pain as the scalpel, as you just like dig it into what you know is a point that will start to let the most blood. She screams, but you feel both of your bodies start to like fall backward into the hallway and you land on top of her, causing her to scream further, but the the poker just goes <laughs> into your throat as you hit and you take a body. At some point, can I follow him and try to, I guess, a lack of a better word, like straddle his chest and try to grab the poker from her. I'm assuming because she's Absolutely. been hit, it's kind of loose and I can do that. She is, <clears throat> she's on the ground with, with a scalpel shoved into her now between them. Yeah. Yes, you can. You want to try to rip or pull away? I'd like to pull it away. Okay, yes. Yeah. So he is gasping just the way yeah. this man is. I, that would be, that could be strike, strike or control for you. Just, I'm both gonna equally great. Both equally horrible. I'm gonna spend a drive. Okay. All right. So if I if I sp- just one. Great. Oh, oh come on. <laughs> what we get, baby? What we get? That's oh a one. no! Oh, no, 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 no. That's a one. I do have resistance, but I I have one. So yeah, this is important. I'm gonna use the resistance, which means just re- just do one. I'm gonna reroll a different one. Okay. I'm gonna yeah, take well, this one. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. You know, that one's it's rerolling jail. the base roll, so you never so roll you two don't and take get to the lower. So add drives or help or No, anything. just rerolling the one that I rolled. You roll two just... and take the lower because you're not adding the oh, drive. Oh, I roll two and take the lower. Okay, well that's hard. Do you take think? Worse. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Double both five. fives. Both fives? Yes. Wow. Worth it. Wow, that's amazing. Um, uh, so, <laughs> Pegine and Edgar go down, and you just um, step through this minefield of a home and lunge and get on top of Edgar and grab the bar yes. and start to pull at it. And then you feel this whole knot that is the three of you buck as this smaller, larger than you, yeah. but smaller woman just um, begins to push up with her leg and teeter-totter this whole knot over, and you feel yourself lunging forward, so you're going into a headstand position, and then rolling into the hallway. You go clattering into the ground, it's not too bad, the poker gets ripped away and goes (laughs) in the hallway at your feet in the kitchen. Um, You you take a a brain, because this is fucked. Yep, can I still, can I grab at the thing though that that fell? Uh, yes, you can. Okay. Uh, at the poker, you mean? At the poker, I'd like to have the poker. Can you tell me how many brain you are? That's one, right? That's just one, because I did my you stitch. You took the yeah. stitch, thank I, you. Um, I, I'm, so I, am I still on top of her? Yes, and she's writhing okay. like a like a I freaked out cat. I need you to know mm-hmm. that I'm gonna pull this out of your leg and you're gonna bleed a lot. Now, if you want me to stop that bleeding, you have to not Try and kill me again. Do we have a deal? She's just sort of ferally grunting at this point. Okay. (laughs) I just pull the scalpel out and I start trying to get up. I'm gonna grab the grab the poker and and back up again. Oh wait. Um. I have the poker. You have the poker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. See if I can find the teapot. Just what's in the kitchen? Is the Uh, well, there are kitchen knives visible, and there is like a tea set platter, and um, it's not a hot pot of tea, is there? No, the tea is on the fire. Mm. Oh shit. Okay. But there are there are kitchen knives. Uh, there are kitchen knives. There are three kitchen knives. One of them is a big fatty, like you're hoping for. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) Malcolm, uh, the your eyes are starting to like redden a little bit. You're feeling like you're having some sort of allergic reaction and you don't know what. Um, you're, you're having trouble breathing in here and you feel like you want fresh air right now. At any point, can I yell like, I think Grania has gone to get more villagers. We should get the fuck out of here. Mm-hmm. Um. So you pull the knife out. I pull the scalpel out, and I'm trying. I'm now trying to disentangle myself. She's trying to disentangle from you. She starts to crawl away, and you do see like a little smear of blood on the floor as she moves. 
Uh, Nora is on her feet now, though. Oh, okay. And she has got a knife in, in her hand, and she awkwardly flips it around so it's in this position. Mm -hmm. And she is now walking towards the two of you. Got the, I got the poker. I have my scalpel. She sizes you up really fast, and then she instead turns and shoves a knife towards Malcolm's chest. Oh, great. You can take we it. have time to react, or no? Or, I, I don't think so. I, I, would, yeah. I was going to. Anyone can try to do it. anything. As soon, as soon as you call it, oh, it, you make it reality. If it was, if it was clear, I was going to try and start sneaking around her to see if I could get a shot behind her. <clears throat> and I took, I pocketed the uh, other two knives. I, I would say that you can catch up with her, but since I mm -hmm. called the yeah. uh, the action of the scene, that that precedes it. So. I, uh, all of you see this. Now it can proceed any way you want. You can try to get out of there. Can I, uh, am I close enough to try to swing at her head with the poker? I think so. Okay, I'd like to try to do Go that, try it. to dis disrupt it. I would like it. to lend her a drive for that mm -hmm. too, by the and way. And what is that? Strike, right? Yeah. Okay. How do you, how do you help? Uh, I want to try to, in my, oh my, I'm gagging, I'm gagging. I want to try to like shove her closer to, uh, to, uh, um, to Grimoria. So that she has a more of a better chance to strike her, kind of like get her off balance, so that Grimoria can. Okay, like, sure. I I could say you can see Grimoria with poker in hand, and she's yeah. coming at it to I kill you. Back. So I think you could just like sort of try to bat her away yeah. as you're hacking. Yeah, because I'm like I'm like I'm like. Okay. <laughs> you can take that drive. Desperation. You got it. Which just means I get the one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. Sinks into. Sorry. Malcolm's chest up to the hilt uh, in in the side, and you feel cold steel run into the center of your body. You take a body. Is that three marks or your fourth? That's two. Oh, two? So I'm going to take this opportunity to try and get right around into the neck and hit the knife into the and hit her hit her in the neck since her weapon's currently stuck. So you're stuck. coming at, at Nora, right? Yeah, I'm coming around and trying to sure. Get so in. you see that happen? She is completely engrossed in the act of violence that she is committing to, and you follow up a chain reaction. Mm -hmm. You make a you make a strike. This is going to suck unless anybody's got any way to help. I literally don't have anything to give you. I'm so sorry. I'm, 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 I'm gonna burn a drive. Thank you. Yeah. How? How would oh you have her? Um, oh yeah. You've got her. I well, honestly, you've got, got her. A knife in your chest. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't mean you can't move. If you can give me a narrative explanation okay, to how so you help. Like, so see me right, right here. So yeah. I'm like, so, so maybe I hold on to her mm -hmm. as he's going so she doesn't move. So mm -hmm. I give her a better, a better you shot. Draw her in draw and just hold the knife in your chest yeah. so she can't so retract she can't and get away. And it digs deeper and hurts like hell. And here comes Leo. Come on. Four. Oh. Four. Uh, I need to start fucking warming the up this fucking hand. The knife sinks into this what? woman's, um, into her shoulder and neck. It's a knife, it is a kitchen knife. It is this long. And almost all of it goes and sinks into this middle-aged woman's back. This villager, this normal person. Um, and she screeches while her sister Pegine is dragging herself along the floor and trying to stand, um, she flails wide, wildly back into you, and the two of you go stumbling into Pegine, and all three of you kind of get caught up in each other and fall towards the fire. And Nora sort of stops short with the blade in her shoulder, just standing in the room, and you and Pegine fall past, and stumble into the fire. You smack your head on the mantle of this fireplace, and Pegin stumbles absolutely into the fire, her face in the fire. You take a body. Mm, yep, yeah, that's great. They're gonna think we did that shit. You hear in the fireplace, oh, man. one sister is in the fire and the other one is groaning and trying to pull a knife out. She is going to run at you, charge at you with a knife in her back and just try to plow, tackle you. Can, can I? Um... Um, okay, so what I'm going to do, as she charges me, um, this is so difficult. Um, Edgar's just going to fall to the ground, like drop, lay, drop backwards. And as she charges, 
I'm going to stick out the scalpel and just slice the back of her tendon. Ooh! No! 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 Surgical no. precision. Like the Achilles, oh, just feel go. that. Oh, no, I feel that right. Oh. Six. Oh, Six. Fuck! Andela. Andela. This woman with her pixie haircut in her mid 30s with a steak knife coming out of her back just comes lumbering at you. Like like a steer, like a freight train, and uh, leaps, and you just go limp, limp, tall noodle that you are, and you've still got the scalpel, and um, she sort of runs up and on you, and you see the opening, and you just reach out and slice, and it cuts through her tendon, and you feel the muscle, that thick tissue, separate, oh. and she stumbles, crashes over you, hitting your head inconsequentially as she falls into the hallway and is now dragging away from you up the hall towards the back door. Pegine has gotten up and is uh, burning. Like her hair is burning and her face is charred and she is beat to fuck. Um, She starts to lumber towards the front door that you came in and pushes the door Please open. Please sit down. Stop. And what she are you doing? is her arms just kind of hang slack by her sides and she begins to walk lamely down the muddy path away from the home. We, we got to get her. Um, oh, we got to get her. Would you I'm I got to attend to Malcolm. Please you two go get her. I'm going to start following her down the down the and I have I've left the one knife, I've got two others now, and I'm going to start walking down. I, I think she, we just, uh, if you are cool with just grabbing her by one hand, by one arm, and you, and we'll just drag her back, because I'm if these gonna, villagers fucking see her, we're tough. I'm knocking her down. Like, oh, I was perfect. just gonna like pull her down. You right. just knock her down. Uh, she rolls over onto the floor, uh, onto the ground, the earth, and she flips over, and her hair is just muddy and bloody and streaked through her face. And she's just staring at the sky, and her arms are weakly. Where is Declan? Swatting into you. Where is Declan? We gotta get her out. Arms are just hitting you. Where is your brother? Where is he? And her arm slumps into the mud. I'm gonna grab her by the feet and start dragging her back into the house. You begin to pull her body, her, her corpse, yeah. through the mud, yeah. and and yeah. Leo grabs the other half, and you get her inside. He, you are calming. It, it is calming. It is it, the intensity is lessening. But one of those women just did something to you, and you don't know what they did. Hey, 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 hey. calm down. It's gonna be okay. I got you. Just slow breaths. I'm gonna concentrate on everybody. I'm gonna where the fuck is it? Nora has made it within about two feet of the back door down that longer hallway and is slowly like a slug with the knife just protruding from her back. I'm just going to grab the ankle. Yeah, I'll grab the other one. Not right now. What are you? What? She's. Flexes around and reaches at your throat. I'm staying back. And is just reaching for you ineffectually. Where are the Murphys? What's wrong with the fairy houses? I'm backing up now and I'm gonna throw a just grab the plate of crisps and throw it at her. Crisps. <laughs> the batter off of her face. One hand drops down and one continues to pathetically grab at the knife in her back. And the hand gets around the handle. And her body just sort of sinks into the wall and you watch her face brush. And she lies still like that, holding the knife in her own body. I'm gonna grab the poker. You have it, right? Yeah, here, here. I'm gonna very gently get her hand off the knife. Just blaze over. Um, 
and lumps onto the floor. Should we? I, I don't know what to do here. Um, they're gonna think we did this. So either we run and leave Declan, or we burn the house down, cover all the evidence. I, I don't know. Oh, I think they knew damn well what was gonna happen up here. I don't Where did the third one go? Probably to get everybody else. Which way? One of them ran, but she looked normal. She left to feed the pigs. You saw her out the kitchen. She ran. Running out the yard. Did, did she go package. towards town, or did she go towards where? She did not. You look out oh. the window yeah. in the back now, and you can see a pen, and you do see three pigs in the back just sort of nosing around in the mud. And there's a field that becomes more stony as it goes and raises up into a hill. And you do see some in the distance. There is some, like, dark mm -hmm. mound or something. Far on okay, the here's the thing. We gotta take care of Malcolm, and then when we can move, we'll follow her. But right now, I have to make sure he's okay. No. I gotta, I'm gonna attend to Malcolm, who is okay. stabbed and also choking. Yes. I'm going to. He's, he's not choking, sorry. Oh, no. He's not choking anymore. Okay. Malcolm, you are breathing. It, it, but, my, my, the, my, like, but I have a, I have this knife that's in my chest. Though. That is a, the problem. Right. The breathing, the burn is subsiding, it's fading. But, um, but then also like I'm like, just just it's down chill. Oh, it's down just, here, okay. Yeah. okay. Where where exactly? Ugh. In the side, okay. Here, Ugh. look, we're gonna gonna have to take it out. Just do it, dude. Just pull it, pull it. Grimora, let's go somewhere I else. This is move your hand. Come on. Ugh. Okay, and this is there's a possibility you're going to have a punctured lung. And we're going to find out in a minute. Do you need us to pull pressure or anything? I need you to grab me a kitchen towel. Okay. And we're already we now running <laughs> into the kitchen and grabbing. Yeah. And I pull out the knife. <laughs> and then I slam the towel against it. Okay. How's your breathing? It's good. Can you breathe? It is. Anyway. It is. You don't hear any. Bubbling or liquid. Okay, it's, I think you're gonna be okay. I'm tearing the cabinets apart. I'm looking for anything, especially anything, any powder. I'm looking for anything unusual. Uh, going you can more. make a, a survey roll. Yeah. Mm. Look for a belt. I need a belt. Um, I'm gonna try to search the bodies for a belt. Uh, yeah, I would say that Nora has a belt and she is wearing slacks. Pegine was in but like a skirt. Okay. So I, I take the um, the belt, give it to you, and while while he does his thing with the belt, um, is there any opportunity for me to kind of I know it's like they just died, but is there anything <laughs> there for me to like glean, like left behind any sort of residual spirit energy that I might be able to connect to? You can sense, you can try sense. Okay. Um, I'm gonna, I want to. So if I have yeah, three and then I use a gilded, I just replace one yes. of them. Okay, here we go, you dumb fucks. Oh, five on the gilded. Five on the gilded. So you can replace, you can yeah. replace one of those. Mm -hmm. I'll have four gilded on mine, but I'll wait. Sorry. No, 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 we're all doing the work. What I can tell you as you kneel by each of these bodies, one after the other, is that you have learned to feel souls on a very subtle level. feel emptiness in both of these two. And it has happened in your time, your short years, living amongst the dead, where you have felt souls staying behind, or restless, or even just there for a moment. Not every time. Right. It's not, you don't bat a thousand. Right. But you, you don't feel anything now. Damn it. I 
I got nothing. They didn't stay behind. They didn't stay behind. No. Can, are they, <laughs> this is a stupid question, but were they h human souls? I was gonna say, like, were they there to begin with? Were they ever with? there? Were they ever yeah. there? It's a hard question for me to answer. You're searching? I am, and I got uh, four gilded. Four gilded. Um, it's not a big house. No. You spend two or three minutes. Side note, oldest sister Grania left those two or three minutes ago. Yeah, right. yeah I know. You find all manner of like cutlery and women's underwear and uh, pill bottles, just a anything that you would find in a house out here in the middle of nowhere. Um, you do find a little um, pouch, not in the house, but you finally end on the sisters and um, I'm gonna, I'm also in gonna, Nora's yeah. pocket there is a little pouch of something, dust. Oh. I'm going to, I have a bleed detector. I have not had the chance to use yet, and I'm going to um, pull out this, it's a strange little contraption, it looks like a snuff box almost, mm -hmm. but like a snuff box lighter combination. It's, yeah. it's a little odd, and it has this wheel, and you just spin it, and I spin it with my thumb, and it just has this little, it looks like a lighter, it either grows, glows red, or it, sometimes it glows green, mm -hmm. just as I, and red means red red means danger. nothing but when the green hits okay there's something odd and i'm just running it over yes you bring it in proximity to this stuff and it puzzles you because it you look at it for a good half minute and you're wondering if you're getting a, like a false positive <laughs> it is faint to the point where you're mostly doubting, you're thinking, you're imagining it, or you want to see it, you expect to see it. Or maybe you are. I'm bringing it out. It's odd, and I'm just trying to see if it's a powder or a herb or... It is here in this little living room in a cottage. It looks like a dry, white, inconsistent powder like it's not fine um, there's there's texture or, or larger grains does it look like I think I got a hint of what happened there it doesn't it does it look like it would it could be that yeah I think this may be the culprit maybe not and I'm gonna gently close it and I'm just gonna f like feel is it spongy is it is it it's dry sand it okay. feels dry to the and there's only one bag that I found. Yeah. Okay. I've got up the side of his shirt. I've opened it up and I'm looking at it. It's just, is the, did the knife wound get twisted or is it just a slice? Straight in. Straight in, okay. So I, um, I go into my medical kit. Gamoria, uh, please apply pressure. Um, I go into my medical kit, I get gauze or a small, something of the like. And I'm gonna press it, remove the towel, press the gauze in there and then I'm gonna take the belt and I wrap it around your chest and tighten it against the wound, leaving that there. Mm -hmm. That's gonna have to do for now, mm -hmm. until I can stitch you up. Gotcha. How are you, can you stand? Yeah, I think so. Oh. Yeah, come on, come on, let's get you up. Uh, oh. We need to follow her. Oh. Yes, yes we do. Uh -huh. Just, I, just, I don't think they have a walking stick, but you can try using the poker. Uh, it's poker. Is it worthwhile um, one of us taking him back to the ship? I'm not I going anywhere. I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think okay. he would go anywhere if I told him. No, no he really would really this out right here. So you guys move out the back of this house past three little pigs in a pen and move through the grass and start to move through this small field behind their home and the, the land is already moving up almost immediately. You're, you're climbing a hill and the grass fades pretty quickly and you start to see more stone um, and it becomes, the whole landscape really becomes cracked 
chunks of rock, almost like what you'd expect if you looked. You guys have looked through a telescope and peered and imagined the moon. Mm. You could almost imagine you were on the moon, except here, it shoved in between all these stones, you see occasional wildflowers growing out of it. Again, this island, just eerily beautiful, but barren, and you have to start to climb. The stones get larger, and you are climbing your way up now, a pretty steep incline. It's not like you need rock climbing equipment, but you don't want to stop paying attention. If you take a tumble, it won't be good. And you eventually make it up to a plateau. This is like five minutes later. This is pretty close. And about 100 feet ahead of you on this bumpy plateau of stone, broken up chunks, you see what looks like a stone dome, almost like part of an egg, um, maybe like 20 feet high, and um, the clouds moving overhead. Um, it's a gray day, and there is a, a dark, rough rectangular hole at the base of this. So maybe this is a fairy home, but it's shaped, it's shaped like an egg or like a beehive, and it's just sitting by itself. This is worse than I imagined. Can I use a, like illumination key to sense phenomena? You can sense, you can do an action to sense. Why not? Yeah. A roll. I will use the yeah. gilded die. Yes, of course, of course. <laughs> yeah, hit me with what you got, guys. Well, I got a, a candela. Yeah, all right. A it's six. not on the gilded six. yet. <laughs> okay. A candela. Uh, in this moment of fear and and doubt, you close your eyes and listen to those voices that have been whispering in your ear all day and part of yesterday. And in those whispers, you feel like you can hear Declan's voice mixed in. And he's reaching out in way, the way only you are able to reach out. And it's obvious. He's waiting for you. In some way, calling to you. I share that with the group. I'm just running the bleed detector quietly like a fidget toy. It's not a false positive. No, nope. it is starting to glow. I have the bag as well. Every step closer you take, it brightens. Put it away. <clears throat> I have the bag, and I'm probably just touching the knife in the pocket. Okay. Knife, poker, scalpel. Wait, who's got the poker? <laughs> I have to oh, I thought we gave it to him. But anyway. Oh no, you should keep it because he's uh, injured. I need that. Point. He's got I, the poker. I grabbed, I grabbed one knife in, in, in the cistern, and then I had two other in my pocket. And then I took I, the whole batch of them. Can so I, they grab, grab, can I grab one knife from yes. you? Yes. Yes. You guys are be foolish not to. Yeah. Yeah. And we're slowly marching towards this fairy house. Yeah. You close the distance. Edgar, you looked like you had something on your mind. Looking at this fairy house, and um, I do have a cult researcher as a skill, mm -hmm. where I can take one brain to ask the GM an important occult detail that I would recognize from your studies that has not yet been revealed. If there is none, I clear the brain mark. Cool. Clear the brain mark. Okay. But I will give you a non-phenomenon bit of knowledge, and that is that Old Fair was a, for its time, very advanced, you all know, through alchemical 
um, artistry. A mighty place, but it was not the only thing in the world, and there were other cultures that lived in and around it and held on to their identity in the outskirts of Old Fair. And many of them lived in stone structures built by hand, roughly, for the weight. There's no mortar, there's no anything holding it together except for early engineering. So we walk our way toward this structure. I'm gonna get my gun out. Okay. 50 feet away. 30 feet That's away. <laughs> anything following us? Anything around? You don't see anything okay. easily. 20 feet away. 10 feet away. I'm going through my Rolodex in my head. You're standing outside of this stone hut. And you can just see a bit of the dim sunlight fading in. Dirt floor on the ground. You don't see anything, but you hear far from you inside. Sorry, before I do that, sorry. Let me stop being in, in, impulsive. Mm. I just... Is it like, is, 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 is our, all our bleeds are going off right now, or is it, are they just as strong right now? Bleed is damage you take. Bleed is a, is a negative effect. Sorry, it's my bleed detector, sorry. <clears throat> Mine was going nuts. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Leo's is already very obvious. gone yeah. off. I mean, how else are we gonna figure it out? And Grimoria believes she's heard him. Yeah, he's definitely in there. That's him. I would say we, I'd go in there. Mm. So your friends are putting a hand on your arm. All right. But anyone who wants to do anything can do anything they want. You can. Declan. Yes. What was that? What was her name? What was the sister's name that ran away? Grania. Grania. Oh, yeah. is that you? In there? Can you hear me? Is that you, Declan? Can you hear me? All right, go in. We're gonna have to freaking rip the band-aid off, gents. You walk and in the door, and as soon as you step under, you have to lean down to get in here, and you move your head in, and you immediately, on your right, hear dirt scrabble, and look, and you see Grania with an axe I'm gonna shoot her. swinging down at you. Straight up. <laughs> Shit, I got my gun ready I'll to go. Well, you, the, the axe blade is moving, so you've got two ways of handling this. Mm -hmm. You can try to get out of the way of it, <sighs> or you can say, screw it, and take the hit and shoot this woman. Oh, dude. But no, the, no, no, no. you are in this moment. I'm gonna, move, I'm gonna get out the way. Yeah. All right. Because I can't get any more damage, I'm gonna mess myself oh, up. Dude, so, <laughs> I'm gonna like, burn a drive with that too, by the way. I'm gonna burn a drive it. Burn it! Yep. Oh, I wish I had one to give you. Daddy some bacon. Give daddy some bacon. Alright, I got a four. That's a four? You got a gilded? Yeah, you get it back. back. <clears throat> I, just, I, I didn't brace my drive. Anything yeah. to help with? That's all good. In a split second, you hear that dirt scrabble and you realize she was fucking waiting for you. And you just try to twist your trajectory in time and pray that it is enough. And you feel the wood come crashing down on your noggin. God damn it. Oh, this is the wood. <clears throat> yeah, is um, I'm going to shift it to brain because mm -hmm. it was a solid clock 
and it certainly hurt, but more than anything, you just came within a split second of getting your head cleaved in half, and you are stressed. So take that brain. Got that brain. Okay, what happens next? Can we see her? You see her legs and lower half there inside the doorway of this stone structure. I will start to back up, but I will take the bag of whatever it is mm -hmm. and just start to threaten to pour it and have the knife. Does it seem to do anything? It. No, oh, she's crazy right she now. She has, it has, she is locked on Malcolm. Okay, she's and not. Doesn't there. pay any money. I, that's, no. it makes sense to me. Mm. However, she's just not. she is in it. I'm going to go through and just try to push her away from Malcolm, take her down to the ground if I can. Okay, make a strike move. I don't have anything in there. Two. Two? God, I have to roll two and take the lower. Oh. Do you have nothing to, to no. burn at all? We're all out of drive. I only have one drive. Drives, drives, drives are terrible. Yeah, yeah we're going to have to rethink that. I'm going to shoot her because my drives are plentiful. Because I, I just Hold took that a thought. Wait, oh, shit. I took a mark. Edgar goes running in as you hold your head and move off to the side. You uh, charge her and she turns and with the axe, um, you got a two. Mm -hmm. oh, man. She doesn't have a chance to swing it, but she manages to whack it up under your chin. Okay. Um, and you go falling back into the dirt. You take a body. And as you, your <sighs> jaw is maybe broken and you hit the ground and look, <sighs> stunned as you are with this woman standing over your body, and I will get to that gunshot in a second, and across the hut you see Declan Murphy cowered into the corner, arms up, his face pale, white, mottled, some sort of growth around his eye and up into his hairline. <laughs> Over to you. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. So Declan's over there. He has a growth. He has a he has a growth on his on his face yes, and looks out of it and terrified or heartbroken or wrong or wrong. Okay. And so at this moment, she is his his his, his sister is she just boom. I want to shoot Maybe her. Maybe broke shoot her. her jaw. Has was, her back to you. Yeah, yeah. No. Okay. Now, my 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 uh, one of my abilities is a sharpshooter. I know it well. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's when you want to make a ranged attack with a weapon. You may spend one nerve to steady your aim before shooting. Yes. And add two D to your next shot at this target. Yes. Here we go. So yes. the first. So so how does that work for me? So I, so my one nerve. So be, if you got a nerve, you erase it. It's gone. Okay. You add two dice to the roll, and if anybody. Um, what is it? Does that take time? Wait, wait like what kind of nerve does it take? Does it take a drive? Take a that's drive. just him, that's just making this okay. moment count. Okay, it, 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 okay, it takes a drive. So she drive. has turned away from him and rocked your world and is looking to you to then turn the ax yeah, around for the my, kill. That was my worry. And I have now. I now. So I, she's got her back to you. So if I have, so if I have, uh, sh so if I have shoot, so I add two more to the shoot, right? So yes. I, I, I have and if you control. have, so using that ability, burns a nerve. Right. And you get to add two dice to whatever you have awesome. for strike and, or excuse me, for control, control. for shoot. Okay. And if you want to burn drives, if you have them, you can add more dice. I'm gonna add because I'm, I'm obviously not. I'm not doing well right now with that. Mm. With that. I'm gonna add another drive. Okay. I want her done. Wish I had one to give you. It's nerve, right? Got yes. four. Yeah. yeah. I don't have anything. Oh, a handful of dash, handful of dash. <laughs> give Malcolm something nice. Oh, I got a four. I got you got a four? It's fine. We'll take it. I'll take, I'll take, take that. It, man. Shoot, her, shoot the girl in the butt. Mm -hmm. Shoot her in the booty. <laughs> Shoot her somewhere. The back of her head erupts. Oh, thank God. Perfect. The cost. Spraying you. <laughs> no. With all the backside of her brain. You shot her from 
six inches away. Okay. Maybe it's a little too, a little too, uh, I maybe overdid it a little bit. We well, <laughs> I put you six inches away because of everything you burned. You spent a lot to make that shot count. Yeah. So, and it was a small and close place. She was going to kill your friend and you have just ended her. She struck, staggers forward and topples over on top of you. So many people toppling on top of you. <laughs> so skinny. And you hear a scrabble in the dirt behind you. No. And Declan gets up and starts to run through you all towards the door, past you, to the door, makes his way out. You're still outside. I'm still I'm outside, outside and as I well. Have, You're and still I have outside. the bag. You have the bag. Sunlight hits your friend, and his face is like decayed around the lip. Does it look like the guy on the ship? Like that sort of? No. Okay, different. No. That guy was Melted sort off. of evaporated yeah. away. This was Declan's face has got growth on it. Okay. There is some sort of mottled white and pink growth on his oh. face. And he um, crashes into you. Uh, he I comes crashing Declan. towards you. Push <laughs> right. <laughs> Runs right into you. Um, if you don't move, he topples over, stumbles into you, onto the ground. Back, 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 and I pull him away. Bits of his face sort of fall away, and, and not the dust that went into Malcolm's face, but chunks of his 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 skin on this side of the face are are, are spongy and, and and break easily. So you got like little chunks falling in your face, and a um, little bit of it goes in your mouth. Oh, you think, um, and he, Throw up immediately. you take uh, was, yeah. no, literally. I was trying to drag her out of it, but I'm gonna say you take a brain, and uh, and you take a bleed. Getting out of that hut. And he doesn't stop, though. He falls on top of you and coughs and sputters. Well, I've, at this point, I, I, there's enough time that I'm, I, I, I get hit, but I'm not going to stay down there. Yeah, but he actually <laughs> moves over and past you. Sure, sure, sure. So he's away from me. And wait, so quick, I get a special thing with bleed. What is the source of the bleed? What is the source of the bleed? Yes. Declan is the source of the bleed. Declan is a phenomenon uh, now, yeah. by he definition. He is fully not himself. Someone grab That's him. parsing language. Is it fairy bleed? Like, is it anything? There's no fairy bleed in this world. Okay, I don't know. No, it's, there's fairy tales and tales of fairies. Gotcha. Anyway, he's up on his feet and he is running is he over on these feet? unstable rocks away from you. Back towards the house. I'm. I wouldn't. Yeah. I would, charging him. I was gonna say I wouldn't have let him get. Somebody up. grab him. I, yeah, I wouldn't have let him get up. I would have run and pushed. All right. So that would be a. Uh, I know. Strike. Yeah. This is gonna suck. Can't help you. I'll say that. No. Two. Two. Four. You got a uh, I. I have nothing. Oh, I'm out of okay. this. Um. You run into him and his arm just slaps you in the side of the face. Um. Not enough to truly harm you, but you get knocked back a foot or two and he continues to run. You see him fall in these rocks because it's very uneven and there's huge wedges that it's easy to like twist an ankle in. Now go grab him, he's going to fall off the He stumbles and hits the ground. I'm gonna go back right from there. I'm gonna I'm gonna seize upon the moment to go there and catch up with him and, and, and subdue him. Alright, make a move to catch up with him. He's about forty feet ahead of you. Candela. Candela. Get that dry bag. Get that dry bag. Jeez. You go running along this plateau of stone, and you are watching your steps as you go, stepping on stone, careful not to make 
one wrong step and, and just wrench your ankle as you go. And you catch up to him and you barrel into him and knock him down to the ground and get him on his back on stone. And uh, he is just like struggling against you with his arms and his eyes really don't feel like they're taking you in. And he's just swatting at you. It's not enough to hurt you. You have the upper hand here. I have him. Come over here and help me out. I'm walking over. Or... I want to... Is there anything I can... Like Declan, where you're right here, man. Is... Are you Keep there? Keep careful. He's going to... Don't... What he's breathing is bad. Do not get anywhere near it. Um, could I maybe Let use... Him. Connect with someone to, to see if, if he will tell me anything or I can hear anything through the voices. Anything like, like before where I could sense him before I saw him. You could try to learn something new by rolling sense again. Okay. Uh, I'll keep rolling it till hey. I get something. Declan, can you hear me? It's Edgar. No, no. I got a candela. You got a candela? Just not on the guild. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna call it that. He, he is there. You can feel him there, but he's not, which means his soul is present. It's like, but it's like fighting he's for He's not re responding to you, Edgar. Um, okay. I don't know what the powder would do. I'm gonna take out a handkerchief and just use it to at least keep just, him from just, coughing. We can all try. Just wait, I'm gonna take some, in my medical kit, I assume I have ether or chloroform or something like that. Some sort of thing to knock, to put someone out. Yeah. I'm gonna put him out. Just knock him out. He struggles against it. Hey, you're just gonna go to sleep for a little bit. It's gonna be okay. And his body goes limp. Okay, we need to get him down from here. <sighs> All right, let me help you out. We gotta carry him, we gotta I carry him down the hill. Okay. okay. Let me get my, let me get my, let me get the legs. You get the torso. I mean, I'll help. Yeah. We'll help, we'll all help. Before we bring him down. You guys carry him. Oh, no. uh, yeah, and uh, if you're gonna carry, we can. can Can you also point a gun while you carry? Well, uh, I, I don't can. know if I need to yet because we're, because we're, I mean, we don't Maybe have... I can just have it. Well, yeah, I want you to hold on to it. I'll hold on to it yeah. because we're gonna, Help I me. Mean, you need that. Take, take a second to truss him up if you don't mind. Can I borrow you for one second? Sure. Dear? I'm gonna walk back to that egg. Yes. Mm -hmm. exactly. I'm gonna pull out my lighter and walk in slowly and look around. And I'm not gonna breathe. I'm gonna cover your mouth. It's a very old place. Um, you can see in the far end where he was, where you found him that there is traces of white chalky dust mixed with the soil here. There's no belongings. Is it similar to the dust that's in the bag? It could be, it could be. It's a similar color. I uh, back out. Going or down the hill? Do we have to make a decision? All right. Um, it seems like if he is, a, it's if, if he himself is a bleed, and we do not know the source of, we don't know what's causing the bleed. We don't know what's affecting him. That we should contain him and bring him back for, for and we can bring him back to, for the way to do that is to bring him home. Bring him home. Yeah. We gotta knock him out, though. And how long? Yeah. How far is home from from where he is? Home is home. You're about a half day away. From half day him. away. I'm sure he's got plenty of that chloroform or ether. Like, you just keep knocking him out. I don't just bring him back, back to the town. I think we go back to the house at all. Yeah. Keep I, him tied down. Well, yeah. I'm, once we get him on the ship, we can restrain him. I'm knocking him out over and over again. It's not a good idea. It's not good for him. Yeah. We need to get him on the ship, but that's going to raise questions when we walk through town. The last, uh, and the ship's not there. Is there, um, is, so they have their farm. Is there any kind of wheelbarrow like instrument we can use to kind of cover him up so that we can go through town and um, and kind of like disguise him? The fact that we have him in the wheelbarrow. How long will chloroform work? Depends on his system. And also, we should, can tie him up. It'd be easier to carry down the hill. Look, 
once. What we, what we have to do, we set the ship away. It's not gonna be there waiting for us and we can't just stand on the dock. We'll be able to do the simple, but yes. What we can do, I'm sure people on this island have rowboats. We steal a rowboat, we just row out to the ship. We don't make a noise, we don't make a fuss, we just leave. Do we see any rowboats nearby? Well, not here. We're not. No, 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 I'm but like, or, you know, we we're, can't be far from water or from another house. Here's what I'll do for you. You get him down to the house. That takes 15 minutes. You get out on the road with him and get near the coast. And it doesn't happen right away, but you do find a rowboat. This is a seaside place. Um, no one challenges you. And you climb in and lay your friend in the hull of this small boat and spend the next hour rowing your way back to the Dandridge. You're a day away from knowing anything, if you'll ever know anything. And I think with all that you have suffered in the last 48 hours, we'll end things here. Returns to the Dandridge and heading home to see if you can figure out why your friend is not your friend. That's where we'll end our game. Well survived. Not for lack of trying. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. High five, team. That was a good. That was a good time. Um, <laughs> my blood pressure is like. <clears throat> same, same, <sighs> same, same, same. Not bad or bad mold. <sighs> well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you too bad. Mm. Um. Thank you very much for. Uh, going to sea and traveling to Serenity with me. Mm. Too bad we didn't find any. <laughs> yeah. Well, for a split second there, but you lose consciousness, kind of serene. <sighs> well, we've made it to the end of the first piece of our chapter. Um, do me a favor, you guys. You were such lovely players tonight. Will you please remind the audience of who you are here on Earth One and who you were playing as here in the Fairlands. <laughs> um, my name is Alexander Ward. I, um, I was playing Edgar, or Dr. Lycoris. Um, and uh, you can find me on the internet under that name. I'm around. Hi, I'm Amy Carrero, and I'm playing Grimoria, who is a weird, Medium magician. <laughs> and that's clearly a little homebrew action, um, thanks to our wonderful game master. Uh, my name is Imari Williams, and I'm playing Malcolm Trill. Uh, Till, sorry. Trills. Uh, Trills, I should know my own last name. Uh, and I am uh, I'm a voiceover actor. You can find me on, uh, on, on Instagram under Imari Speaks, um, or on uh, TikTok under Imari underscore Atari underscore Ferrari. <laughs> I love it. Came with that myself. And uh, Mal you know, and Mal <laughs> Malcolm is, um, he's ex-military. He uh, comes from a very powerful family. And, um, and I've survived uh, a great tragedy that, that struck me while I was serving in the war, the great war of, uh, of New Fair. And I am, um, and I'm basically uh, the muscle with a heart of gold, I would say. And my name is Taliesin Jaffe. Um, I'm a voiceover actor, and you can find me uh, deep in the nightmares that dreams have when they sleep. Um, I was playing uh, Leo Amicus, who is, uh, um, technically speaking, uh, the journalist uh, uh, 
class in Candela, but of course we can play, so he is in fact actually a professional man of leisure. Well, I had a lovely time with you all, um, and thank you for joining us. I'm Liam O'Brien, your Game Master on this chapter, The Circle of the Crimson Mirror, here in Candela Obscura. Sleep well, family.